Okay, for everyone watching, um, I'm just starting the Hangout now uh, for Google Plus Week, so people will be coming in and we'll be getting ready. It'll be pretty boring initially, probably, unless you're a true stalker. What's up, Peter? What's happening, Mr. McDermott? What's up? Behringer, are you kidding Hang me? On. Hang on. Are you going to do one of the funny faces? The new feature of Hangouts? Hold, hold on here. Okay. Hey Dan, hey Peter. Hey Alan, what's up? I think we should um I think we should hit the Wall Street Journal article first. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Know? Hang on. What did we just do? Say that again? I think we should do the Wall Street Journal article story first. Testing. There we go. Yeah. The three minutes uh, a month versus seven hours a month story. Okay. I think that's more newsy. I was trying to get a hold of that guy. I haven't heard from him yet. Good luck. He uh, does not... I, don't, I haven't seen him interact on one of his posts. Have you tried calling him? Uh-uh. I've, um, I've had an email exchange with him before. But, yeah, um, well, just it, call I think the switchboard. He, get his extension. Yeah, I think... Um, I mean, he said what he said. And he may be right. But we could, we'll talk about it. I don't know, pre-interview. Hey, so when are you going live? Um... At least 15 minutes. Okay. I may not be able to stay for terribly long. That's but, cool. Uh, we, we'll do the one thing, which you probably want to weigh in on anyway, Wall Street Journal thing, and then we'll do uh, the post you brought up, or the, the, the issue you brought up. Which and then, issue is that? The um, suggested so, user list. The suggested users list or the what's hot list? Because I brought up both. Um, I think... I think I, Alan or Oleg, whoever put it in for both. Yeah, we could we're going to do your stuff the first three stories, so then you can, you're welcome to stay as long as you wish or roll out. It's cool. That's always understood. People come and go. All right. I put them in, and I saw that uh, you were treating them together, so I, I put them on the same line. Oh, look what we have now. <laughs> Man, you people. Isn't it nice they gave us this feature for on air? Yippee. Yeah. I put it on the list though already. Oh, I imagine hey, Oleg may too. wish to weigh in. It rotates nicely, I think. Those that's definitely for that's it that, they ought to call that the Oleg horns. Now oh, that's me, the halo. That's perfect me. Now, how do I? So I got to get the Justin chat. Oh, I just got a pet amber alert spam call. A pet amber alert? This is a pet amber alert from your neighbor Shauna. Shauna is missing a brown chihuahua. To view an image of the dog, go to www. or call 615. I'm like, are you serious? Like, really? I got to tell you, I think that's a disservice to the Amber Alert system. Absolutely. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a troll, whatever it is. I assume it's a private thing that's just using the name Amber Alert. Oh, my God. Jesus, Matthew. Talk about TLDR. I hate it when people waste really good dialogue in private posts. 
oh man, you're not you're not joking. There's so much stuff I want to share, but I'm reluctant to. Or even if it's just a, even if they just posted a story, I'm always like, I don't want to not credit them as the source. But if they said private, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. want to expose them. But yeah, there's some really one guy does it all the time. Almost every post, I've even said it to him. I said, I wish you post publicly so I could share it instead of linking to it in my own post and then being afraid to say I saw this from this guy because I don't want to upset him. I think my browser, all of my browsers have kicked me out of Hangouts today. Have you guys had any trouble with that? It's been uh, My first one. Lately, I've had people come in, leave, come right back, and then they what get browser? What browser? What browser, Harold? Chrome and, Chrome and Firefox both have kicked me out of Hangouts today. Hmm. Because you know about the the known problem and temporary attempted workaround for. No, but she she did a post. She's yeah. last post was about the browser crashing. Yeah. I saw she's last post and um, Daniel, Daniel, David, was also talking about it in the Hangout team Hangout. Yeah, God, I man, I thought I knew what was going on around here. You people like know everything going on. Yeah, well, we're in Hangouts with them every single week. Uh, the uh, Alan and I get in every single hangout with the people on Thursdays. <laughs> they come, they hang out with the uh, hangout people, uh, David and uh, all those other people. They hang out every Thursday. And then this week we got in with Natalie Verbados. We got in with Catherine Graham. And I didn't. I didn't even try to get in with the the community managers. I didn't bother trying. Yeah. I, I got in with all of them, everyone this week. <laughs> I saw the usual crowd there, and I said, I've got no chance. I'm not even going to try. Well, I just keep clicking, and eventually you get in. <laughs> One, two, yeah, three. she does, she does uh, like, pre-selected ones where she arranges the people to be in them as well. Yeah, Maritz always gets in first. She's real close to him. Okay, I'm going to start the streaming of... Um, Everything, I guess. And then, um, again, for people watching this recording, we're getting ready to do Google Plus Week. So. Yeah, I just saw it pop up in the stream. Once OLED gets in, I'll open it up to a wider assortment. What's, um, what's the new icon next to the screen share button? Oh, click on it and find out. I didn't want to just randomly, you, you know, start doing things. <laughs> yeah, everyone select Anthony's screen and then go ahead, Anthony. All right. I, oh. Yeah, you're you're backlit. That's why it's not working, Anthony. Yeah, you have to have light. You have to see your eyes. It there has to go. see your. Oh, there it goes. It has to see. Once it sees your eyes, that's it. Okay. Amazing how much free time those Google people have. <laughs> yeah, I can't manage a community. The thing makes us look like a dog. Come are you going to talk about this feature takes a whole 30 that? seconds? Trust me. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The framework's already there. They just have to pick the line art they're going to use for it. It's not line art. What are they using? Whatever they want. You, uh, J I do it with JPEGs. Well, what I meant by line art is it's like solid colors. I didn't necessarily. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I, I mean as opposed to you don't need to do anything fancy to create one. You just need to create a JPEG. That's yeah. it. Well. I'm going to do my logo, and I'm going to have it attached to my forehead. Somebody put me an extension for that? I, I, yes, I can. It, the, the, hang, the developer API lets you do it. It's trivial. It's in their sample code. Yeah, well, what I would like, I would like to have this on my forehead. Your forehead's actually a little difficult. Your chin is easy. Okay, on my chin, yeah. Yeah, trivial. Or how about, can you do it on both sides of my head? Um, I can do one side of your head. The thing is, I can I can pin it to either your left eye, your right eye, the bridge of your nose, the tip of your nose, your upper lip, or your lower lip. I want and it I next can, to my right eye. And I can do offsets to that. So yeah, next to your right uh, eye. That's that's trivial. Right. If, if you uh, can you do transparent? I mean, can it be yeah. partially transparent? So that yes. you could just yeah. like do it to the two the eyes and then offset it. You know to the forehead, you know. Yeah, the, the tricky part is getting the correct size, but that, that's why the, the dog mask that you were doing, for some people, the, si the eyes don't quite come out correct. But yeah, it's true. I, let me see if I can find this picture again. So did you guys see the, the what's hot circle I was working on? 
I saw when you introduced it, yes. So I just completed it. It's 266 people. And I'm about to share it. And I need to have an epic post to go with it. But it can't be condescending. So uh, that's what I'll be working on here. <clears throat> All right. All right, let's shoot for about uh, six, seven minutes. I hope Oleg joins. Everyone to familiarize yourself with the topics. Peter's going to join us for the first two or three topics, and then he may have to scoot. To work you can talk about that Proposition 7 hangout that Clooney and Brad Pitt and all those people are doing? It's 8. And it's Proposition 8, and I thought it was a movie. No, it's a YouTube. It's, a YouTube. it's going to be on YouTube. Yeah, I'm in a YouTube movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's not a hangout. It's a YouTube movie. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a YouTube, yeah. A little bit different. Yeah, you know, details, details. That's just what we need actors bringing in on gay rights. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I put it? So, you know, I found this interesting. A couple of Googlers put themselves in the circle. Well, they think they're pretty interesting. In what, in what circle? Uh, the, uh, the, the thing I did yesterday, the What's Hot circle. Oh, okay. Are you wearing gloves, Harold? Yes, I'm freezing down here in the basement. It's cold. I got it. It's 68, but my hands are freezing. I've never seen someone on, on a show wear gloves but not a coat. That's odd. But you're a unique individual. Yes, I'm a unique no, individual. No, he's not. Don't it's just my hands are cold. I don't know why. Well, at least your feet aren't cold, Harold. Yeah. He's not yeah. as tough as his Navajo brethren, perhaps. Yeah. Brave, braving the elements. Yes, my Navajos, the Navajos, they have no water. Or no electricity, and they have to go. They, they have to go and get kerosene to to read at night and stuff like and that. And you're chilly, and you're wearing gloves. I mean, come on, yeah. man, step up. Peter, here's yeah. an example of uh, of putting text, attaching text to my chin. Oh, very cool. And I don't know how well you can see the controls on the left, but yeah. in it, you you basically type in the text, and you uh, you fiddle with the colors and what font you want. So did, say, did you design that plugin? Yeah, Very it's cool. not actually. It's a. It's using the Hangout API. It's not a plugin. So it it will someday be available to anyone in a Hangout. Someday. Hmm. But if I install the API, I can do that. I can permit you to access the API. Well, I can permit you to access this API and tell you how to get there. Yeah. That would be fun to play with. Um, I will contact you off. Uh, I, I will will contact you out of the Hangout to discuss. Yeah, absolutely. Because I need to get your email address. I will give you a hint. <laughs> it may or may not be <laughs> my name at gmail.com. And by my name, I mean Peter G. McDermott. Okay. But yeah, we can talk outside the Hangout. This is my favorite one in the box here. See, I didn't get a selection. Like, it just no, it just cycles through. It just cycles okay. through. It just like you know, because they're they went with a different UI. And Harold, the the difference is that mine is being done through the Hangout itself, not through any any camera tricks, not through any other plugins. It's yeah, this is a third party program. I'm using oh. Right. Yeah. What, what, no. you saw, what you saw was running in a hangout itself. I think it looks great on you, Peter. Yeah. Oh, the the devil ears. Should I go back yeah. to that? Yeah, I think that's appropriate for me in this space. That's reserved for Oleg during the program. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> I I keep getting called the sil silver tongue devil. I can't can't seem to find out why. I guess that's a nice way of calling me a troll. Nah. Yeah, but we all start using our overlays. <laughs> I think it covers my beautiful face. I think that's why I stopped using my overlay. Yeah, speaking of that, Harold, you should I probably get that back on. Yeah, that's what I was just putting it back on. See? See how it covers my face? 
The overlay? Yeah, you look much you better. You can adjust your camera a little bit for that. Is that a PSD, or where'd you get that? Uh, I made this one with a... Uh, yeah, I just made it in a Firefox. I follow... I just... I copied... Uh, I asked Maritz if I could copy his design, and he said, okay, and so I just made one for myself in Firefox. You designed an image in Firefox. I wish I knew how to do that. Yeah, it's, you can you can create anything in Photoshop or Firefox, any program at all, and then just use a Webcam Max or Manicam to put it over top. Alan, I have the same look on my face about Firefox. <laughs> Are you talking about oh. GIMP, Harold? Well, the Firefox is is for web designers, and Photoshop is for photo people. Firefox was designed. I've been designing web since 1994, and and all I've ever used is Firefox because it's made specifically for that. Not Firefox. What I say. Let's uh, Firefox. No, I'm, fire. What's it? Fireworks. Adobe. Adobe Fireworks. Adobe Fireworks. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. That might work. <laughs> Peter and I were looking at this going. Something Fire doesn't fit here. Are no, you using no. an extension? Fire is that a website? <laughs> yeah, oh. it's some kind of fire. It's on fireworks. Isn't it? Man, this shit is on fire. Uh, watch it. Oh, we. I'm sorry. Hey, so Alan, I noticed something today. I was hacking. Um, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. when you click a drop down to see who plus one something. You can actually collect that by inspecting the element, hmm. and it'll okay. show you the profile IDs because we all know it's much easier to plus tag a profile ID than actually trying to type in the name. So when you're going through your posts, you could run a script on the source to pull out all the profile IDs, and then you could go into a text editor to append a plus sign in all of them, and then the next time you go to share a post, you can copy and paste that into the share with field. Yes. And in fact, the API exposes profile IDs, and the API, I'm pretty sure, exposes who is plus something. So that's something you can do trivially on a website. Well, I'm not that far advanced. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's a good point. That makes a lot of sense. Well, But I, it I'm, terminates after a while. It terminates after 100. That doesn't surprise me too much. Yeah. That that particular drop down list of who plus one or who shared terminates after 100 profile IDs. So I think it's the top 100 relevant profile IDs. Because what I was trying to do is I was trying to extract everybody that shared the circle. Yeah. Now and I'm. I was I was like looking through the code in the in the page source and then it stopped and said plus 108 more. And I'm like really, really. Um. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a quick way to give that for you, get that for you. Do you have the? Uh, can I get it through the post? What is that? API Explorer. Get an activity. It's Mr. Oleg. Oleg. Hi there. How are you guys? Okay. I, I really don't want to block this person, but if she shares another freaking post with me. Is it an exciting game update? You talking about Sheila? No, no, Jennifer Harriet. I'll, I'll post it. In a, spirit of, in a spirit of perestroika. Go for the Oleg next one, Oleg. The new features. No, I, just, this I is just put up a post. I just want to block incoming. I don't want to block her from interacting with me because she could be a valuable audience member. But I don't want to see every time she shares something with me. Yeah. So <coughs> I guess that's just too powerful of a feature. No, you can no, you can use ignore and that will do that. The ignore feature. Ignore. Yeah. yeah. If you use ignore, you can't see any of her posts, but she can see all yours. Right. Mm. 
Hmm. Maybe I'm an idiot. Well, and if you, is if you um, block them... The, the block thing is not what you want to do. Everybody who... Where, where is the ignore, ignore Harold? Harold, where is the ignore button? Well, well would, when, somebody, when somebody follows you, it says you want to follow them or ignore them. I'm not sure how you do it afterwards. No, but I, I no, 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 no. That's not... That's yeah, that's on you, post. That's for post. No, it's do you want to ignore the fact that they followed you? It's not about their posts. No, no, no. Yes, it I, is. Yes, it is. Well. If you hit ignore, that you will not see their posts. They will see... Because I don't want to see everybody's posts. No, no, I, I have only a select yes, people. Yes, you're right. Because you didn't circle them. So you're not going to see their posts. But they can still share stuff with you. The yeah. problem is she's sharing, she's notifying me every oh, okay. time she makes a post. Okay. So oh, okay. Yeah, well, you, no, you can't stop that. You quick can't stop guys. that. If they're, if they're notifying you, yes. You can't okay, stop. quick. Um, if you go to my Justin TV profile... Um, if you're on, if you're on one, if you only have one computer in front of you, I recommend you not watch the Justin feed. But I do recommend you engage in the Justin chat room, which is where some viewers will be chatting with us. Uh, Linda Laurie's in there, Mike Phillips is in there, and uh, so what you should do is open a tab, go to justin.tv forward slash Dan McDermott, and then um, in the toolbox on the top right of the chat thing, you can open the chat in a pop up. So it'll open up in a pop up window. And then you can close that tab out. Because if you leave the tab running, A, it's going to diminish your, brought your internet speed, um, if that's an issue with your internet. Um, and B, it's going to, every time a commercial comes on, even if you have the player muted, it's going to play the commercial volume. It's going to be a pain. But I do recommend you pop out that chat so that you can en engage with the folks who are in there. And Linda has uh, always interesting observations. And she, as she just said, uh, Google settings let you stop all notifications from those you don't circle or have in extended circles. Right, but you only get one opportunity to do that. It's a balancing act. I mean, if you're if, if you're like Lindo and you got close to a million followers, that's that's mandatory. Um, just to start blocking. But uh, because she, I mean, she would have nothing to do all day except respond to those notifications. Um, but um, for other folks, you know, you just have to. It's a balancing act. You have to decide at what point you, you need to do that. I'm not. I'm not at that point yet. But yeah, I, I don't like all these game notifications you get all the time. You get game notifications? Oh yeah. Even though I've specifically said not to give me game notifications, but if it's a post about a game notification, they share it with me. What are you gonna do? So, I mean, if you block someone, they can still see your stream, though. They, I mean, they don't know that they've been blocked unless you like, you know, tell them as much. I've been blocked, right? and I was able to tell because I couldn't see any of the person's posts. Uh, oh. you'll, you'll see, like, if... Um, Sorry, I can't make it. He has visitors from Japan, so that outrates us as well it should. Anyone who comes from a different continent is an excuse. What about if you live in Alaska and you have visitors from Russia? You immediately run away. <laughs> Remember Star Wars? Return of the Jedi? Not Return of the Jedi. It was... Uh What's, what was the episode five, whatever it was? A New Hope. No. Uh, <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. Empire, Empire Strikes, Strikes Back. Back. That was one part. Second part is in the latest Star Trek. Remember that? How the guy was running away into a cave in the snow? So those are the experiences of dealing with Russians in the snow. You run away. It's logged me out again. Of where? Yep. Because you don't have the halo, that's why. Sreek, there is the direct link to just the chat. You look good. Yeah. Surprised Ellen isn't wearing a mask. He's a fan of these features. Can you do that with uh, extras? Or? Yeah. 
No, I think you can do it with any hangout right now. Yeah. I'm trying to find it. Here's here's the post on, here's the post on the ignore. Hey, I got a question for you. Um I just see something new. I'm here. I'm going to invite some, um, my circles, right? So I type circles, C-I-R-C, and ordinarily I would see like your circles, extended circles, right? I see that. I also see circle count, circles, circled.us, circle of cricket. I know I've not circled circle of cricket, nor did I know of its existence. I think it just shows the user names or page names. That, that, yeah. that match the cert, that's all. I've never seen that before. Have you, Peter? Um, I think you're only oper well. I I've seen it show people who are not who I am not following before. Yeah, that's not it. But do you see circles, the the blue icon? I I yeah, I just did that. Um, in fact, if yeah, it'll show you all users relevant to what you're typing. You don't have to have somebody circled to invite right. them to a hangout. Yeah. You just can't invite public. That's the one thing you can't do. Which is odd. Dan, Linda is saying that um, the rest of us aren't coming through on Justin TV. Video or audio? Audio. She just said, Dan, you're the only one I can hear here on Justin. Oh, wow, she used the right hears. Interesting. The wrong word, but yeah. Uh, Linda, is it low or they're not at all? There. She just heard whoever that was, which yeah, I she, guess was either Oleg or me. <laughs> I think she can hear now. What in the world is my freaking... She can hear now. Okay. What in the world is my freaking password to Justin TV? All right. Too many fell bogging attempts. Okay. I give up. All right, everybody set? <clears throat> yeah. Who wants to lead on the Wall Street Journal thing? Which thing? The Wall Street Journal thing. The I ghost what? town story. I don't know what it is. You only spend three minutes a month on Google Plus versus seven hours on Facebook. No, oh, this yeah, yeah. No, we can talk about that. It's such a BS deal. It's incredible. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Let's let's uh, quickly talk about that. There's not really much to talk about. Did you look at that user who who posted it? The author. Yeah. It's a joke. She's got I think three people who are following her. No, it's a guy. It's a guy. The 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 user the author of the Wall Street Journal article is a Google Plus user who I've um Oh, I've so it's different. Did you see the post I did about somebody posting some nonsense about uh, I don't remember which publication it was, but it was also some deal from some woman. That was a woman. Maybe lots it was a post. Lots of people have been reposting the Wall Street Journal article. Or <laughs> No, 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 but this was actual publication. She was the author. I don't remember if it was in the Wired magazine or it was in the Forbes magazine. It was one of those. It wasn't anything just on Google+. All right, let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, I'll, I'll start off. Uh, Alan, you, you've read the article, right? The Wall Street Journal article? Can we start with read you, extra then we'll go to Oleg, and then whoever else? And then the second topic is Peter's post about um, the suggested user list and then the other thing, the... Uh, What's well, hot thing? And I guess he's got more on that now, anyway. Um, so, okay. I'm looking for hotkeys, man, big time. I wish I could have a hotkey. I've suggested this. Do we have a hot? Wow. Alan, what's the deal with Alan Yellen? Do we have hotkeys yet? Um, he was poking fun of you. Um, do we have hotkeys yet to select? Do we have a hangout hotkeys yet? We do have some hangout hotkeys. That's what I'm going to be. Okay. That's what I'm going to be talking about. Okay. 
because I want to be able to select which user is up front. Yeah, we Namely, don't have those yet. That would be sweet. I've suggested that to them, and they said it was a good idea and that they would like to use it as well, or one of the engineers did. So hopefully that will be yep. a feature named after me, perhaps. <laughs> we were actually talking to the lead engineer on that. So. Okay, cool. All right, <clears throat> let's do it. Let's do it, boys. Let's do it. I can't find the stupid deal. Let me get mine. Okay, let me make sure my audio is running. Oh, everyone, um, introduce everyone. Well, I, I will as they, uh, as they go on because they won't see them otherwise until uh, they're asking me to introduce everybody. And I was like, they won't be really see you on Justin. Okay, let's do it. Here we go. Make sure I'm reporting this and this. I've got this new system to make it not sound like crap. Okay, hang on. <clears throat> Hello and welcome. I'm Dan McDermott. This is Google Plus Week, our unofficial look at the world's coolest social network. Lots to talk about this week. First up, a Wall Street Journal article that quotes a Comstore statistic that says people on average spend three minutes per month on Google Plus compared to seven hours on uh, Facebook. So I want to ask Mike uh, uh, or Alan Furstenberg. I, I saw a post uh, from Jeff Jarvis or a tweet. I think he said uh, Rupert Murdoch hates Google. Ergo, Washington uh, or Wall Street Journal hates uh, Google. So the question is, first of all, does Comscore have a history of accuracy? Um, so is this, a, is this probably an accurate statistic? I think the, the biggest issue when we're talking about the accuracy is we don't know their methodology. We don't know exactly how they're acquiring this information. So you know, can we say it's accurate or not? I think certainly every single one of us uh, has some personal experience and some uh, personal anecdotes that say, no, it's not accurate at all. Okay, um, is it, uh, uh, Oleg, let me get you in on this. What do you think? And, uh, I think it's completely inaccurate. I mean, uh, basically, I've read nothing but all kinds of posts from people time to time that just cannot basically get all their life back because of how much time they spend on Google+. Plus. Well, and but look at all the people who, um, like, look at, like, you know there's a halo on your head, right? Yes, I do. That's okay. why I make the comments on it. But um, anyway, it's, it's one of these deals where, you know, from my experience, certainly, and from other people's, uh, I'm just promoting new Google features. Uh, from, um, you know, I spend way too much time on Google Plus compared to what I used to spend on even things like Twitter and Facebook. I mean, that was basically just little deals I did here and there just for the heck of it when I had a few minutes. Google Plus actually is engagement in Google Plus. There's no comparison between that and just about anything else. So I agree with Alan. I don't know what they're measuring, how they're measuring. But you know, one article, a similar article I read uh, from another publication, which I can't quote right now because I can't recall what it is, but it has a similar sentiment that nobody, that you know, the rates really dropped in terms of usability and in terms of utilization of Google Plus and stuff. And that particular person who wrote that article uh, indicated, basically, I looked at her profile. She's got three followers. She's got no posts. And so you look at that, and you know, what, how do they let people in this write these articles beyond me? But you know, from if you look at how many posts you get, if you look at all the what's hot and see that there are tons and tons of posts that get you know 500 uh, or even more uh, people that commented on it. I think they only show 500 comments, right? So it shows you know counts go all the way up to 500. You cannot have lack of engagement and at the same time you have over 500 comments on anything if nobody is paying any attention, doing anything Google Plus. So I personally think it's totally bogus. Well, I know that uh, in, in, in defense of that, if she thinks that the service sucks, that's why she doesn't use it, that doesn't mean that she can't say that. Um, I know that, like, I've, I've talked about some services that I thought were, I don't know, just not captivating me. And so I, I said that on the show, and then I guess someone there could say that, well, he never uses the service, that's why he's saying this. But I don't know. Um, Peter, what, okay, do you think this is fair? Um, I don't know how accurate Comscore is on this. Uh, I know that a lot of people post privately, 
I know that a lot of people who circle me um, have like no posts, or they have a post from from uh, January or from August or July, and they're not really using the service, but they circle me. And um, I know that I have a lo lot of relatives who aren't on the service, and those who are don't really use it. In fact, I'm in my county, Warren County, 40,000 people. I am by far uh, the most prolific user, and I don't know if anyone uses it anywhere near the way I do. Uh, so, I, I mean, they may actually be accurate as much as we don't want to admit it. Is, um, do you think that they might be correct? Well, uh, you know, let's talk about um, one thing here first, Dan, and that is the fact that uh, all the data that's available to us publicly is um, public data. So what Comscore is using, what's accessible through the API and through Natural Search Online is all public information. One of the big things that Google pushed when they were um, talking about this network in the beginning was its first network where you can easily set the security of every wow. communication you have. So every time you go to share something with somebody, you have the option to either share it with one specific person, a group of people, everybody that you follow, or the entire world through public. So I think a lot of the people that initially adapted Google+, Plus adapted it because they like the ability to not share everything to the entire world, but just to the circle of people that they trust. And, and I think that's got a lot to do with the name circles. Um, but another thing, let's talk about the big, uh, the big disclaimer article, and that was that Comscore did not track any mobile usage. I mean, I'm on my phone all day checking notifications and responding to comments and doing things like that. Now, of course, I've got a few more followers than most, but my dad, for example, he, he uses Google Plus all the time. He never even knew there was a website. He just thought it was an app for his phone, and he's been using it for months now. So, that's I mean, funny. that's that's, that's a critical omission there to say, oh, yeah, by the way, we didn't include any mobile usage on here. So that makes me wonder what else have they omitted from there. You know, obviously, there's no way to tell what public activity there was. Um, you know, they only have the ability to, to find out, or excuse me, any private activity, only the public activity. But how they got the data, um, you know, if they got it directly from Google and, and that's really the way it is, I'm not really shocked. You're talking about 90 million people and, uh, you know, even if 9 million are on here constantly using it all the time, it's going to average out. You know, if I do three hours a week and, you know, one guy created an account and never came back, it is going to average out. So I think finding out what the actual percentage of regular users are would be a lot more relevant than saying, oh, the inactive users count towards the average. So I think instead of, you know, doing a straight average, um, you know, maybe there, there could have been some better statistical analysis to figure out, you know, maybe a mean... Um, you know, something different. I don't know. Well, yeah, I just I think, want to uh, add what, what go ahead, Oleg. Oleg. I was going to add that, you know, the deal, what he said about mobile is definitely makes a lot of sense. And also, we got to remember that when you're using a tablet, which tons of people use tablets nowadays, they're running the mobile app. So it's the same thing as using the phone. So if they're excluding all those people, they're excluding a ton of people. Then the thing that you touched on before about the private use, and, you know, what Peter said also, is you got to keep in mind that there's plenty of people, at least in my circles, I mean, I can tell you one thing. I have about 450 people I follow right now, and when I look at my stream, it's a constantly moving stream. You see new posts coming in all the time. So obviously somebody's posting something, and I don't have 10,000 people that I follow. It's only 450. That's one example. Second thing I was going to say, I have plenty of people who I usually see in my streams that indicate I never, and I mean that literally, never post to public. These people do not post to public at all. They only post to their circles. And if that's the case, as Peter alluded, they're not getting this information. They can't get it. Google doesn't supply it. Well, so but that's the, the case. Here's, here's, here's the real question in all of these cases is somehow they're theoretically, if they're using the public data, they're turning number of posts into amount of time spent on the system. And I don't see how you can make that right. conclusion easily. You can't. You're right. You can't. I'll, I, w I want to get to uh, uh, Sreek and Harold um, also, but a couple comments from the Justin TV live chat. Uh, Monsoon315 says um, that, man, I got, is there a back, I'm not sure who's got the background. Okay, I think that's a Sreek. Um, but may, uh, hang on one sec, Sreek, and then we'll unmute you. Uh, many are on Plus only because of buying an Android phone. They never use the service, though. And then uh, Linda Laurie s says Google should bring back, this is a great idea. Google should bring back real-time just for Google Plus posts. That would show mobile as well. That would be fantastic. 
although they would be, um, I, I, I was going to say they'd be accused of abusing their, but they've been accused of that for a few months now, so who cares? Uh, but Sarik, I still don't buy that. I, I hear all this defensive stuff about, because we're all fans here. I love Google Plus as much as anybody in the room. But um, is it, for, I can't think of a better analogy. Is it the Mensa of social networks? I mean, is it just is it just not for everybody? I'm talking to a person with horns on his head. You're talking about um, Comscore or um Google Plus? Is it just not for everybody? I know folks who, um, you know, well, I know the guy here uh, owns a local junkyard. He's on Facebook. Before that, he was on MySpace. He's absolutely not on Google Plus. My 74-year-old mom signed up, asked me about Google Plus. I don't think she's ever posted anything or really used it. My sister is a marketing guru um, in the social. She was giving a speech today on social networking. She, I got her to sign up for Google Plus a couple months ago. She basically doesn't use it. She's posted a couple things. She had to give a speech today. She called me last night to ask me for some information about Google Plus, even though she's been on the service for two months not using it. She's giving a speech about social networking. I, I think I, I see a lot of people. I'm, almost none of my Facebook friends are actually on the service. I think that th as much as I don't like to read this article, I don't necessarily think it's inaccurate. No, it's easy to explain. It's actually, in my view, it's easy to explain. It's the problem is the 24 hours a day situation. That's the problem. Oleg, uh, what I think is, uh, it, it is it is true that, um, I don't know whether I should say mainstream. Um, I have like 200 people whom I have circled for my family and friends who are not adapted. As well as, I, I don't know whether they are reading any of my posts. Some of them come and sometimes there's absolutely no sharing happening. Uh, people who I have in my circles and people who I have, so, I mean, people who have circled me mostly are people I never knew before, like you guys. Uh, so there is clearly a lack of en engagement within our, uh, you know, dear um, and near. So. I believe that it's going to take time. It's going to take some time. We have to just wait. Now, the question I have is, is it really that necessary? That, that's one point. Another thing is, I would just... Google Plus that necessary? Is it really that necessary that you should have... Uh, it, is, it is better for Google Plus to have all your friends and family circle you and vice versa, and, you know, that kind of engagement. I'm not really sure anymore. I mean... Um, for me, I mean, I, I don't know that I should say this, but in Facebook, yes, there is a lot of engagement. But I use Facebook for, an, I mean, uh, Google Plus for an entirely different purpose. That's one thing. Yes, there are, I mean, over a period of time, I think that like two or three friends or family members come active. I'm thinking it's going to take maybe a few months, maybe a year. But a lot of people will become active. In my home country, I think there is a lot of participation. 16%, 17% of the entire Google Plus population is already from India. Uh, and uh, that, that's one thing. I was just Googling, um, Googling, yeah, uh, Comscore, just, just Google Comscore wrong. You can see how many companies have complained that Comscore actually has produced wrong results for most of the search. I agree with Peter when he said, I, I didn't know actually uh, that Comscore was not including mobile statistics. Uh, that is really surprising because if you are activating 850,000 Android devices in a day, and that's that's what the latest statistics say, right? Yeah, but whatever st whatever methods are using to to analyze uh, Google Plus, they're also using the same methods to analyze Facebook. What, why do you well, think well, that's so? not necessarily true. I don't Facebook think that's true. Our right? API, folks. Say, I mean, Comscore. I'm talking. What, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, one, one more thing is, uh, what is that, uh, the averaging, if there are, I mean, if there are 400 people, I mean, there are a lot of new people in Google Plus who may not be active at all. One thing is, yes, they may not be publicly sharing, but uh, how do you, I mean, it's a new thing, it's just six months. You know, you can't, uh, six months, can you, you can, can you really say that, if, if you average it out, you know, if there are 500 people new and if they're not really engaged, if you average it out, it might come to three minutes. It could be true. But is that really a good measurement? I don't know that. Dan, you, the question you asked is different than the one that I think Comscore is trying to address or that Comscore claims that they're addressing. You're 
kind of raising the question of there aren't really a lot of different people here. There aren't a lot of new people here. We aren't getting the same kind of crowd as we are in Facebook. And so far, that's true, but it's changing. That's different than saying the person who is on service X versus service Y interacts for only three minutes versus, you know, 28 hours every day. Which, you yeah, know, the I'm real sure power users use it hours and hours a day. Right. Exactly. That's but, exactly why you know, Oleg mentioned that you have like 300 comments. But it does, it does not surprise me that if you took every single person, all 100 million who have signed up for an account, either voluntarily or they bought an Android phone or however it works, right, uh, or clicked on the name once. They're in Gmail and they see their name with a plus sign next to it. They click on it. What's this? Okay, cool. And they go out and, uh, you know, they, maybe they clicked on something to join Google Plus, right? So um, now they're a member and they never use it. So I think if you actually added up all 100 million people and, and uh, divided all the hours spent among them, it might be three minutes a month because a lot of people don't use a service and there's a lot more accounts than actually uh, yeah, active users. That, that, that's, that's an important point. The important, important question you raised then was why isn't your sister, who is a you know, marketing executive, as you mentioned, is not using it even though you've given their, her account a couple months ago and so on and so forth. Because Obviously, she clearly realizes, since she does speeches on social marketing, she realizes the importance of it. But what the deal is, like I said, it's a 24-hour situation. In other words, your sister is probably not the person who's got seven hours a day where she just sits and does nothing, right? I'm sure she's got life, kids, work, this and that. There's, the day is full, like all of us do. So the question becomes, if you spend any time on one social network, like Facebook, for example, you don't really have any time to open to go to Google+, Plus unless there are compelling reasons to switch. Not, you don't have any more hours in a day. So it's not like you can expand your day, and now you have some time dedicated to Google+. Plus. I think it's about if you find it interesting, and, and if you feel there's a, uh, um, a return on investment. And I love but the way you say Facebook. But to find Facebook. it interesting, you need to find the time to specifically engage in this, right? Yeah, well, and he finds the time to engage in other things. Um, and, and a very patient, uh, Harold, give me 10 seconds with Anthony here, and go ahead. And then, Harold, Anthony, go ahead. You know, the repetitive argument in support of Google Plus is where was Facebook nine months into, you know, um, being publicly open to everyone? And I can just about guarantee you that they were no, nowhere near the um, interaction that Google Plus has when Facebook was, you know, nine months old. So, you know what? Give Google Plus, you know, what, Facebook's been open for like six years to the public now? Give Google Plus six years and let's see where Google Plus is um, compared to Facebook. Absolutely. Okay, and let's, let's go to Harold about this story with uh, Google Plus versus Facebook. Well, if, one of the things you really need to look at is if you look at the top users, uh, I mean the top people being followed like Mariah Carey and Britney Spears and all those people, they spend two or three minutes a week on this, doing their post, and that's it. So if, if you were to grab these top people who, who just put their names up there and have a lot of people follow them, they're not the engagers. The people that we deal with, the people that we talk with, are on, the, are on here, you know, I would say, three to four hours a day. Well, I would agree with that, but I think that's not the point of the article. The, the, the point of the article is that, on average, the 100 million people on average, spend three, mil three minutes a month. And that no, may very well be accurate. Bogus as saying that on average people spend seven hours on Facebook. I just don't see that being the case. I think that's totally bogus. Right oh, there. I think seven hours a month on Facebook is, is, is uh, maybe a conservative estimate. Oh, they said a month or a day? It, it a can't month. be an average. It's a month. It's three okay. minutes a month versus seven hours a month. You, see, I don't, you can't accidentally saying. sign up for Facebook. You can accidentally or inadvertently or very easily sign up for Google Plus and not ever use it, right? That, that, that's yeah, a very really good point. What do you really mean by actual engagement time? I think Alan raised this. If, if you are actually signed up on Google Plus or Facebook on your mobile device, is that considered to be engagement time? Uh, if, you, if you actually you know, uh, sum, submit a post from a, a Wall Street Journal article using your Facebook sign up or your Google Plus sign up, is that considered engagement time, or is that the time you spend on Facebook playing Farmville? I don't know. I think a lot of people have just have signed up either on purpose or just wondered why their name had a plus sign in Gmail um, or in Chrome, and they don't use it, and they're not going to use it, and it's a, it's harder to sign up for Facebook that way. 
Streak's Alan, go ahead. Actually, we got to go. Streak's comment actually made, brought forth an interesting one. Somebody in our uh, in our Justin TV chat says, uh, "I'm curious how much time people will spend on Facebook now that Zynga has their own website." And that's a, an excellent point. That Zynga is no longer really seeing the uh, the need for Facebook, even though they were quoted in the article as talking about how they were disappointed by uh, by the response in Google Plus. Yeah, I can believe that. I mean, I don't think uh, I think it's a different audience. And I think um, is Google. My question is Google Plus the Mensa of social networks. I think is um, uh, interesting comparison. Dan, um, just to add, that also yeah. brings us back to the original question of who is an active user. Um, if if you look at the Facebook IPO filing, it clearly says that out of the 850 million users, close to 400 million actually doesn't go to the Facebook site. They just use their Facebook login exactly as I said, as I said, to put comments, etc. So, are you now talking about 400 million users actively using Facebook for seven hours a month, or the 850 million? You know, the 850 million. If you divide the usage by all the users by 850 million, you get seven hours a month. The active Facebook people use it a lot more than seven hours a month. Um, I, I, I believe that. Um, I do believe this, Sreek. Um, and, and we got to go, but I do believe that the, num the, the percentage of people who have a Facebook account who actually use it frequently is dramatically higher than the number of people who have a Google Plus account who use it frequently. Possibly and you can tell so. that by looking well, because at because there's more users than Facebook, files, right? Right. and that's a given. Okay, uh, Peter McDermott, you had a post that made some waves uh, this week. Uh, I made a couple uh, a couple waves. Um, well, the first one I want to talk about is, is the suggested uh, user list. Maybe it was last week. Uh, right around a week ago. Yeah. But the suggested user list, uh, you were not a fan. Why don't you uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Well, you know, my, my thoughts, as I get more and more information, this is what I encourage people to do. Have a discussion about something. I mean, don't limit yourself to, to what you already think. It's so great to sit down, hash things out, and realize there's information you're missing. You can learn more about something if you're willing to talk about it. If you keep those ideas in your head, they're not going to grow. You can't manipulate them, and they'll be set in stone. So once you, once you let them out and, and talk to people about them, you can mold them around a little bit. So, you know, I, I did a post um, about being organic. And, you know, one of the things I have noticed, and I've talked to a lot of people that manage brands here, is that there's a huge unfair advantage to the people that were added on the suggested users list. And the question is, if they remain on the suggested users list, will traditional celebrities ever be able to catch up to them? Now, the reason I'm saying this is because the people on the suggested users list, that's what you're hit with when you first log on, sign up your account. You're given this list of around, I think it's 300 people. I'm, I'm not sure how many are on it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of my things was, you know, how are these people chosen, first of all? Um, you know, why were they chosen to be there? Uh, but more importantly, why are they given an unfair advantage? With Search Plus Your World, every time they share something or plus one something, that's going to augment the search experience for anybody following them. So, you know, one million people isn't um, a lot of people when you look at the global population on the Internet. But when you look in terms of savvy consumers searching for things on Google, those are going to be the one million people following Robert Scovel, following Mike Elgin, following, you know, some of the people on that list. So my thought was they're kind of given an unfair advantage in terms of search because, you know, whatever they decide to vet, that's going to be promoted to people that have Search Plus Your World turned on. So, you know, the argument went back and forth. Um, the post, which had tremendous response, 56 shares, 188 comments, never actually made it to the What's Hot list. And uh, that brought me to another topic. But it, it was an interesting cat, discussion. I'm sorry? It didn't have a cat, that's why. Yeah, it didn't have a cat. That must be, uh, that must be exactly why. Okay, well, let me ask you this, uh, Peter. Um, doesn't um, you share circles? Let me be devil's advocate here. You share circles of, of people who engage or people you like or blah blah blah. Um, you have a right to share to put anybody you want in that circle. Doesn't Google have a right to suggest who they want to suggest? It's not democratic. It's who Google recommends. Well, and, and that's that's kind of where I ended up. Um, is <laughs> this is Google's space? This is Google's sandbox. We just got invited to come in and play. So you know, my thing is what I always tell people. Um, you know, in my job, 
is if you're going to complain about something, have a solution. And, you know, I kind of had a halfway solution. And I see a lot of people complain, oh, this is terrible, this is dumb. You know, one of the solutions I came up with is, you know, it, it should be more democratic or at least cycle through it so these people don't have a stagnant advantage. Um, but, you know, Twitter and Facebook do the same thing. So is Google any different for doing this? No. Do they have the right to choose? Of course they have the right to choose. It's their network. Um, but, you know, we, I was trying to play we, devil's advocate. I we, think we get to this issue of do they have a right to choose a lot. It, it, it comes up on the show every couple of weeks. And I think all of us tend to agree, yeah, of course, Google has a right to choose. And, you know, it's their service and they can do what they want. I think what distinguishes the, um, the what's hot list, sorry, the, um, the suggested user list from just about anything else that Google's done in the past is that it looks like it's manually curated that it looks like there is somebody somewhere who has picked up a bunch of names and have blessed these names. And in the past, Google has been very, very staunch about how decisions that were made to put things at the top of the search list, to choose what advertisements were made, to, you know, pretty much anything that was done ends up being done in, for two things. One, it's being done using an algorithm, so there's no person somewhere saying, oh, hey, I want this person higher on the search results than someone else. And two, a lot of what they've done have been mutually beneficial to everybody. So when they rolled out their new form of advertising, that was beneficial to Google, it was beneficial to people who were doing the advertising, and it was beneficial to people who were placing the advertisements on their page. Um, the, what's, the, the suggested user list, it's not as clear that it's as beneficial to everyone. It's not designed for that, I don't think. And I'm not on it, okay? Well, and Basically, and Dan, everybody who's on it has a half a million followers. Or more. More or less, right? Or more. Yep. A quarter million to a million. Everybody who's not on it has 200 to 30,000 followers. Um, and uh, so it's a big difference. But I could tell you, it's, we have quality. They have quality and quantity. In other words, um, if you look at the actual engagement and Linda was on the show in the past. She's got, I don't know, close to a million followers. Um, if you look at the actual engagement, Sarah Hill was on the show. She's got close to a million followers. Uh, Mike Elgin. If you look at um, the number of quality comments on their posts versus hi um, uh, from our international friends, uh, you'll find it, it's not that different. Once you get to a few thousand, then you'll find that uh, you basically got a quality engagement. Anybody who follows me follows me because they're interested in what I do or what I'm saying. Same thing with all you guys, right? It, it isn't some um, billboard that was up there and, and they uh, did it because everyone else is doing it. Um, it. It's not easy necessarily to find us. They find us because we share a post that they're interested in, blah, blah, blah. But really, like I said, we have quantity. I mean, we have quality and they have quality too, but they also have a bunch of quantity that they have to deal with and it's a real hassle. Yeah, it, it, would I turn it down? No, if they wanted to put me on there. Um, but uh, I don't think I'm really losing much, and I don't think it really impacts because I think it's a bunch of spam accounts. It's a bunch of uh, uh, folks who don't speak English. It's a bunch of um, um, it's a bunch of uh, BS accounts, whatever. How many minutes and, a month uh, do you think the spam accounts are logged in for? I don't know. Um, I would well, say, and that's uh, you know that's minutes. another thing that's going to hurt these statistics. If you're talking total number of accounts. And you have spam accounts um, that are either bot-driven or only come in from time to time to, to, to do big blast posts. I mean, they're going to be on, you know, one minute a, a month maybe. And uh, that would skew it depending on, you know, what percentage of uh, yep, accounts here are fake or uh, spam accounts. Right. So, so I want to know really where you ended up, Peter. Yeah. Let, let me ask Peter where you ended up because you're being diplomatic now. Um, but you were of course up. I'm being diplomatic. I'm in an on-air hangout. Yeah, but you were pissed off in your post, straight up. I mean, you were oh. like, you know, this has to end. This is unfair. You said, uh, you know, this impacts your ability um, to build your brand or make money or whatever. But the, the bottom line is, as much as if, if you, it sucks if you want to be on the list and you're not on the list, okay? That sucks. But well, really, like the bottom club. line is, it's like if, if you wrote a book and Oprah chose not to put you in her rec in her book club. Can you bitch about it? You know what I mean? I well, mean, it's her book club. It's her recommended user list. And I shouldn't say that word. I apologize. But um, but uh, can you fuss about that? Is that fair? Is that it, it's their recommended list? It does have an impact, and it's it's a good comparison to the Oprah's book club because that that can make or break an author. In fact, they uh, made it eventually. I think they they would sort of give them a heads up 
so they could secretly stock more books everywhere because all the bookstores are running out of the books as soon as she mentioned well, it. Ten minutes know, later, that's a microcosm. You're talking about one piece of communication. You're talking about that one book. Where the unfair advantage lies in here is you're not talking about one piece of communication. You're talking about permission marketing where these people are giving permission to whoever Google suggests to, to share an advertisement with them every minute. And that advertisement doesn't have to be a, you know, an Amazon affiliate link. It doesn't have to be, you know, hey, go buy this. It doesn't have to be, hey, I use OpenDNS. You should use OpenDNS too. It could just be, hey, this is my name and this is my content. Retain my name. Look at my content. Enjoy my content. Retain my name. Yeah, but you know what? If if you were on Oprah's list, that's probably worth a million dollars. Uh, if you, uh, if, I'm going to ask Linda, to, how much money has she made from being on this? I bet she'll say that, and the two bucks will give her a cup of coffee. As far as tangible benefits, I hear what you're saying. I mean, go ahead. Well, I mean, uh, the thing, Dan, is we're talking about the people on the suggested users list, and there's some great people on there. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> But there is some really dead air there. And, you know, one wonders if they've set up these accounts and added these people to the list because, you know, the Celebrity X may have been an naysayer. Their, their publicist said, no, we're not getting into that. There's not enough people there. We'll look like buffoons if we get on there. So that they log on six months later and see they have, you know, three and a half million people following them and say, wow, how did that happen? Well, Google says, well, this is a network. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, people have this person circled and have forgotten about it and they start showing up you know but then there's a lot of space where it's just dead air or it's irrelevant content um, you know so what deems who goes into what category you know there's somebody in a technology category that is very technology oriented but their posts are not so should they be in the tech category or the the category that defines the content that they share I, I don't know where to land on that but the bottom line is they have is, the list I'm sorry why do you think that they have the list? Why does they the have the list? Because everybody what has the list. purpose does it serve? Everybody what has the list. If you, nah, that's, if you a, that's, that's not fair. Well, it, well, Dan, if you come in here, it's, it's a marketing strategy, first of all. It's, hey, look who's on here. Britney Spears is on here. Like, you exactly. Should be on here Britney Spears exactly. Is on here. It's for well, brand new users no, Dan, who first Dan, sign Dan, up Dan, to discover Britney Spears. and. Peter's you know, right. They introduced this because everyone else has already introduced it. This is one of their spaghetti on the wall techniques. They didn't know what they were doing. They threw spaghetti on the wall. They're trying to see if it sticks. It sort of looks like it's sticking, or at least it's getting enough attention. So they're I going disagree, to Alan. I think it's related to our first topic, that millions and millions, tens of millions of people are signing up for the service. And don't know who to follow. find anything interesting. They're like, well, this is boring. I don't know what the hell this is. Um, and so uh, the they, end they, result is they don't use it. But, but now they're they're pretty 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 well a lot, users. you know. I think we'll, we'll get be a lot more Justin relevant. Bieber, look how many more we'll get. I think what would be a lot more relevant is if what they did initially, instead of following Facebook and Twitter and doing these lists that basically are bogus uh, in many ways, not all of them, like Peter said, but you know, most of them are, and being static instead of being you know, something really relevant, what would be a lot smarter for them to do is to come up with a list of topics or categories that most people are interested in, have people choose, and then do a search automatically and come back with users who talk about those topics and offer those people as suggested users. That would be much, much smarter than coming up and show Britney Spears to everybody. Right, and, and that's a great idea, too. They started out here with the Sparks ability, where you could add Sparks to your account, which was, what are you interested in? Now, you, whatever you typed in is still there. You can't add them. You can't access them. But if you were able to you know, somehow have somebody vet your content that it, it actually confirms that. I mean, it could be as simple as, you know, putting an interaction at the bottom of the post is, this is categorized as um, knitting. Is this a knitting post? And then once people get no, better... Initial, it, we're talking about initial deal, Peter. When you get in, you're a brand new user, you don't know what to do or how to do it. I agree with that, but what I'm saying is people would have to be vetted that their content... Let's, let's step back. Before you even log in, right? So we have all these people here and they're posting content. Well, right. we want to start categorizing the content so that we can create sparks so that when people sign up, we can let them pick people based on what they're interested in. So what I'm saying is every time you do a post, you get to categorize it in either one or two things. Yeah, I, what it is, this sounds complicated, but it's not. And it's, especially not, not it's not, but at the same time, it's overly, there's too much work involved. I'm talking about keeping it simple what they're doing now, and I'm just simply suggesting you can even have people type in a search or whatever they're interested in. Forget about categories or giving them something static. You can just type in type in whatever you're looking to or you're interested in. And they can type in you know music, they wackle, jazz, rock, whatever. 
The and problem with that, the problem that, Oleg, is that people don't always know what they're interested in and they start typing in garbage. Having something that's grouped by categories guides them along. What they really need is an easier way to guide people into how to use Google+. Just throwing a bunch of uh, suggested users, not all of whom actually post anything, is not a great no, way no, to but get no, people no, started. Alan, no, 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 I disagree. First of all, don't make people that dumb. Most of them are not that dumb, that they don't know what they're interested in. I mean, come on. No, I think people know what they're interested in, but I think, you know, if you're, if you're faced with, okay, tell me everything about yourself right not now, everything. and Just I'm going to give you a bunch of users. Just type or phrase you're, of things you're interested in. And when they type it in, then they'll go and do a search for people who, who will post about that particular topic, number one. Number two, that actually have posts. And then they, then they suggest that user as one of the users you may want to add. That's no, all. I, I, I think you're on the right track. And I think you're on the right track by linking it to search. And I think this is kind of where they tried to go with Search Pleasure World, and maybe if they can do it a little bit better, it might be better. That from every Google search, they say, hey, there are people talking about this on Google+. Go join them. And starting your Google Plus experience from interacting through a search stream, through a Spark, or sorry, through a, a search stream, might be the better way to do it than try yeah, to associate it with saying. people. That's I'm exactly agreeing with I'm you, saying. Oleg. I, I just don't think that associating, that, that trying to get people started by talking to a bunch of names is the best way to get people started. Okay, I agree. Right? I agree. That's why you deal with, with, with the relevant topics, not with names. And then based on those topics, you come up with names for people. Exactly. All right. Let me, let me look at our, our chat. We've got some good stuff here because I, I brought up Linda uh, as an example comparing I, – I compare the suggested user list to Oprah's book club in that it's Google's right to choose who's on it, I guess. Or unless they want it. Maybe they can come up with a committee to, to select. Well, I don't know. Dan, but, it's, it's my right to, to go to a bad restaurant, but it's also my friend's right to say, hey, that restaurant's terrible. Yeah. You should oh, check yeah, out these other restaurants in town. Absolutely. Actually, I have the right Dan, to criticize it. You know, I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm just trying to, to get to it, and I'm saying that um, I, I, don't, I don't know how they choose it. Maybe it should be more transparent. I'm just, I'm just saying that uh, I think the purpose of the list is related to our first point that the Wall Street Journal uh, unfortunately pointed out, this ComScore thing um, that said, said, said we're, that on average, if you take all the accounts together and the amount of time active on Google+, it's three minutes a month per person compared to seven hours per month for Facebook users. Now, we both know that an active Facebook user spends far more than seven hours a month, and an active Google+, Plus user probably spends far more than three minutes a month, I, I mean, obviously. So yeah, what, what it is, it's, it, it tells you that, that, that there are more BS accounts on Google+, Plus than there are BS accounts on Facebook. Not necessarily. I, I think that that's absolutely the case because I know that uh, the, the Facebook page, if you take any random Facebook profiles, take 100 of them, take any 100 random Google Plus profiles, you're going to see a lot more activity um, on the Facebook, even, even if you're just looking at public stuff, uh, on the Facebook versus the Google Plus. And I think there's lots and lots of people who even circle me and I look and, and most of them have one or two posts. Um, mm -hmm. and now, wait a minute. It's even worse with the suggested user people because they get – about what, like fifty thousand a week, adding them, okay. and uh, well, it, 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 they get all these crazy ads. You know, a lot of them have the same pictures, or um, you know, it's a picture of Brad Pitt or whatever. And well, and Dan, you're talking about, about fake accounts. Well. You, you have to remember about the incidental accounts. You have to remember the people that have the Gmail, that have the other Google products, that logged in one day and said, "Hey, complete your profile." Complete my profile. I don't want to complete my profile. Right. Well, you no. have to complete your profile. We're telling you, you have to complete your profile. Bam, they're on Google+. Plus. I don't want anything to do with Google+. Plus. I'm going to continue using Gmail, Google Maps, Images, YouTube, all the other services I use here, but I don't want to have anything to do with Google+. Right. Plus. No, but now you can. So they're not spam now accounts. They're incidental accounts. Now you're one of the 100 million, right? Exactly. You're you part know. of the army. And, and you who don't use it at all are diminishing that down Respect, to yes. But let me ask you a question, Dan. Quick question. Since you're, you know, you know Linda really well, and you know she's not here. You still haven't gotten her the camera. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to ask was, how did she get to so many users? She's no Britney Spears in terms of celebrity status or anything, but yet she did. Have you she ever talked is, to her? Um, she was very active. Uh, well, she's on the suggested user list, which is. No, no, um, but how did she get to that point? Is my question. She knows. I think she knows them, and and uh, she was very, very active um, on uh, Google. Uh, what's the? Oh my God. Buzz. Buzz. Yeah, Google Buzz. She was very, very active on Google Buzz. Very known, well-known person. And so when this started out, she was an early adopter, 
Um, okay, and, so she's uh, a perfect example of somebody who actively does something to get into this higher range, and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, basically. By doing it this way, that's how she got to be what she got. You don't need to be Britney Spears, in other words, but if you're sitting there doing nothing, expecting a bunch of people to follow you, it's not going to happen. I mean, that's the, you know... To me, that's how the point that that particular story makes. All right, I'm going to read a couple comments here, and then we should probably go on to the other topic that Peter mentioned so we don't have a, a six-hour show because we'll use up like ten years of everyone's three minutes um, yes. with this one show if we're not yes. careful. But Linda, Linda, I'd love for you to come in and uh, <laughs> and defend your honor. No, I'd love to come in, even if you don't have your camera on, if you just come in voice, uh, if you want to hook it up uh, to, to talk about this as someone who's on the suggested user list. I can tell you that everyone is on the list, Elgin, um, Sarah, uh, Linda, um, Chris Perillo, they were all, everyone who's been on the show who was on the list, they've all been among our best guests, the most interesting people. And yeah, I remember so that, it was, that, I delighted true. watching Oleg get into it with Perillo, you know, um, they were both having playful fun. And, and, but it's it only was, because they both were that's It was great. Okay, so let me, let me, um, let, let me just uh, look at a couple of these things. Um, that, uh, and Linda made a, a prescient observation. She said that she's like the... Uh, She's the Walmart greeter, you know. Um, but I, I still think Google has a right to make their list. It's, it's their, I mean, it, it's their Google suggested user list. So Google suggests these people, and they, that's who they suggest. It's labeled as such. And no, the but, purpose but, for but, it but is not listen, because. You, hey, Dan, if you're going to yeah. tie this to the first part of the show, then basically what it means is it mean, means that this list is useless. If the statistics are accurate, which I don't think they are, that means that their strategy for this list is bogus because they're not getting users to stick around with this list is what I'm trying to say if you're going to tie it together too I think that the, the, it, I think Google Plus is difficult to figure out for some people more so than Facebook Oleg says it doesn't work um, I think that uh, I no, know I people who um, frankly are not would never figure out Google Plus but they use Facebook every day all day on their phone and they loll at each other's pics and all that crap and uh, God bless them, they're my friends, but they would never get Google+. Plus. I wouldn't even suggest it to them because they would just stare at me blankly like, well, what's – not in terms of money, but what is my return on investment? You know, how, I'm, why am I going to waste my time on this? Um, any more than, than – they, dis, they would dismiss it as quickly as Oleg would dismiss some stupid game. Um, Facebook. Or Facebook. some new feature or a halo on his head, which <laughs> is beyond ironic. Um, okay, so anyway, let me look at this because we got a lot of comments here real quick. Just some of the uh, – Linda said, you know, I'm like the Walmart reader, um, being on the suggested user. That's it. And she said she hasn't made a dime from it. It hasn't been worth anything except she has more people and right. more of a hassle. And sure, sometimes she'll do a post, and, a, and, and, and there's a, definitely a greater opportunity for that post to go viral if it's good than if someone who has five followers writes this brilliant thing. Nobody's going to know because it's the tree that fell in the forest that nobody heard. So there are benefits for people who care about that stuff, right? Absolutely. And uh, obviously all of us, when we do have a brilliant observation, um, want people to know, you know, like, boy, that was good. You know, I want people to know this. Well, it's easier for that to occur if you're on the suggested user list and you have a million followers than if you're, you know, some guy with seven followers. So that's clear. But then uh, there's a bunch of comments here. Uh, Linda, without a suggested user list for people to choose from, um, they would have nothing in their stream when they first come there. That's the thing, because that's the way it works. You have nothing in your stream. Well, but I think so they this suggest, is you know, circle Britney Spears, circle I Mike think this, Elgin. You know, I think this. Can you guys ahead. hear me at all? Yes. yes. You, okay. I think this is where Oleg's point is much more telling, and and his and his is that starting from the aspect of well, you need to find people in order to circle them and listen to them is the wrong way to approach it. The right way to approach it would have been you need to find topics to start following, and you can follow them now through your search. And once you start following topics, you start seeing people that you may want to follow. That, to me, seems like a much, much better approach to things. Well, and that's what I got upset with, Alan, when they abandoned the Sparks idea, and that's what I was trying to talk about before. If there was some way to vet yourself in a certain Spark by people either uh, thumbs up or thumbs down, is this guy relevant to technology? You know, if all, they're all thumbs down, then I wouldn't show up for that search. But if you had Sparks attached to your profile, and people search for Sparks, it would show the most relevant people in those Sparks. And you could create a Spark for anything. It'd be just like Schemer. It's, it's just an open relational database where you can type in any keyword you want. If it's already taken, you join what's already taken. So if it's a popular word like technology, then there you are. You know? Well, and I, I think the approach that they've got now, um, where you can search for anything, and, and you know, 
now since we can start a conversation from a search result, that seems like a, a brilliant way to keep things going. And I think that's something that now they should be more encouraging of than just following people. Why can't they have Google search directly integrated in Google Plus? Why well, they just do. Well, they, they could, but that's the, it's a chicken and an egg thing. You cannot expect people to go into search to then put people in, in Google Plus because they're just signing up for Google Plus. Oh, so no, no, not just for adding people. You know, right now, you actually go out of Google Plus. You probably search something. You find the topic. You copy that link and share it or share it directly from the search from outside. Now, what I'm saying is if you look at the search field in Google Plus, you're only searching inside Google Plus, right? Right. What, what if you have an option there? I asked to see Anadan Sungar, the chief architect of Google, long back. He said it's a design issue. I don't know what he meant. If you actually can search, if you can show Google actual search results within Google Plus, you know, you can directly search for people. You can directly search for somebody who has shared something and circle him there itself. Well, yeah, that, that, that was my point, is the searching done based, you do a search based on whatever you're interested in, and based on that search, it comes up with people who have more content for what you're looking for, number one. Number two, the content is there. It's going to be nobody with people that, and you can maybe give you an option that basically, or automatically do it, where it doesn't show anybody who don't have a, a profile filled out. If you don't have a profile, you don't get into that list, which will right. encourage people to do profiles, and it's going to be more relevant that way as well. But what I agree with what Peter said. Instead of trying to uh, follow people who have been suggested, it should be. I, I don't know how it is now when you sign up on Google Plus, whether they give you a list of people based on, uh, you know, which uh, area they are. Yeah, there's two at. categories. They give you and the number of people in each category. That's how they do it now. That's you, not you, a can, you can see what they get now by going to the Find People link on the right-hand side of your stream. That's exactly now, what new users okay, see. Okay, we're going to get... I'm going to get hit again because we're already like an hour and we're on the second topic. We got right, it. Next, you know, um, it's time. I'm going to okay. call time. I, I, call okay, time. Let, me, let me say one thing. Let me Last say one thing. And then we're going I, to your I, second. I, your one other thing. One. Okay, so I, I just looked through the list. With ahead. the exception of Sergey Brim, everyone on all topics has posted within the last 72 hours, which was not something we were seeing weeks and months before. Well, I think they're – Okay. So are they being held to a standard? But we'll so move on okay. to the next topic and let you have that. Yeah, the, the end thing is all of us agree the suggested user list is, is a fantastic thing and, and well-managed. Should be changed. And yeah. very transparent. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And Linda has just joined us. And uh, let me see if uh, uh, Linda Laurie's here. And I see they finally fixed the thing where we can – oh, well, she just left. If she comes back, I'll, we'll get her to, um, to come back. I guess she, she's – uh, She's fixing something. Okay, um, Peter, your your second rant was, uh, <laughs> I mean, your second um, devil's advocate post, uh, or however you referred to it prior, um, was was about the uh, um, the what's hot list. Yes. Do tell. Well, um, you know, there's been some controversy as to whether or not the what's hot list is being moderated. And I once think again, we're talking about a list that has controls. Of course it is. Of course it but is. Because like you've had stuff that has 150 shares I have, and it's not on there, and other things that have six shares. Do you, you guys know. really think there is somebody going through this going, ooh, that's good, click? I think it There's absolutely is because they're going to yes. think, there it, yes, they absolutely are because that's how they suck. They're try, they're, they're, I they're, don't. I it, don't. It, this it, is Google. They're the king of algorithms. I think they've got an no, algorithm that's no, 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 far no. more complex than we mere mortals can figure out. Well, no. let me tell you, Alan. The, the problem is you. the Muppets. The Muppets did not save Google Plus, so now they're relying on the What's Hot list, and so they are moderating. So, so you're saying a Muppet is controlling the What's Hot list? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Oleg is secretly in charge. Peter, what is your? What, go ahead. Go ahead. No, what, ahead, what I was going to say is, uh, you know, we've been. I've been participating in a lot of comments after I've done my two rant posts. I've calmed down. Uh, we were participating in some comment threads last night, and one of the community managers came up, and I'm going to paraphrase what she said. Um, I can't directly quote it because I, I don't have that post open right now. I would, would love it if I did. But yes, Google uses an algorithm to listen to what's happening. Not, it was not implied that this algorithm determines exactly what goes into that list, exactly what's propagated in there. And, and, and there, there is concrete evidence that shows things that have higher interaction, either in terms of plus ones, shares, or comments, in a condensed period of time, uh, during the time of the refresh of the What's Hot list, 
we've seen a lot of stuff have a lot more interaction than things currently on the list. So if you're talking about terms of interaction, that's got nothing to do with the algorithm. Now does the algorithm take into account volume? And can there be a point where somebody sitting that moderates, of course you have to moderate the list. I mean, you know, if there's objectionable content going up there, Google hating stuff going up there all the time, they wouldn't allow that. I mean, you'd be stupid to do that. So, yeah, they're, they're clearly moderating it. Absolutely, 100% clearly moderating it. Yeah. Because, and this is the same thing. Their problem, there are some people who hate Google+, Plus, okay? Um, and uh, there are people who absolutely love it, and, and everyone in the room loves it. But the people who are stumbling on the fence or looking, make every day hundreds of thousands of people look at it, maybe millions, and make a decision whether or not this is interesting and whether I should click on this or spend 10 minutes and get hooked, right? They're trying to capture those people. That's the purpose of the suggested user list. That's the purpose of the what's hot list. And they're looking for things that will appeal to um, the non-traditional Google Plus user. Just like when I do a newspaper cover, I'm not going to put the council meeting real big unless you know, they've thrown a pie in the mayor's face or something. But if there's an interesting eagle that flew over or a kid that uh, whatever, that, that's the kind of stuff I'll put because I'm trying to get the non-traditional person to pick the newspaper up because I know the political junkie's going to read it. They know a tech junkie's going to um, be on Google Plus and be active. But what they're trying to do is get these Facebook people, and that's the reason for some of these uh, wonderful uh, cat gifts that Oleg, you know, uh, always makes sure to mention me when he posts. Um, but uh, that, that's what they're trying to do, and and that's the whole point of this. This is marketing to try to fix that three-minute problem that is real because most people sign up inadvertently or intentionally and they they don't get it I don't know I mean I, it's too complicated or there's nothing interesting or it isn't designed well for them or whatever those of us who get it love it and it's great well the Britney Spears deal is bogus anyway because if you join if you follow Britney Spears you're not gonna get anything back anyway that's anything meaningful so unless you're totally in love with Britney Spears Following her does nothing for you to get into engagement in Google+. That's what well, I would say. That's, the word, oh, that's not, the word. That's the word right there is interaction. And if yeah. you're following people, if you're following people on a list, you're not going to get interaction from those content creators. So that may be a turnoff when you first come here. You're not going to have your of friends course. from school here. Your mom and dad aren't going to be here. So when you see somebody's post and say, hey, author, you know, you plus mentioned the author, right. you figured out how to do that. This is a great article. That, that jack wagon never commented back on my comment, and I told him he wrote a nice article. Well, he right. doesn't have time to because he gets 99 mentions every minute because he's got a hundred or a million followers. Right. So right. one thing I just noticed, somebody pointed this out, is we categorize people in circles. Circles are round. They are equal. A list is not a circle. A list has priorities, things at the top, and things at the bottom. They're two different things, and if, I guess if we look at it like that, I just had an epiphany. It makes a little more sense. Well, Dan, one of the things that I've noticed, I just went through the What's Hot list, and we have complained to them about the animated GIFs. I went through the first, the top 100 entries on What's Hot, and there is not one single animated GIF there today. What's wrong with it if, if it is indeed hot? It should be what's actually hot, right? It shouldn't be Google's recommendations among the things that are hot. That's what they should call it, right? They shouldn't say it's what's hot. Well, we don't know what the algorithm is, so it's hard, it's hard to say. Do I mean, like, you could have Brandon... Saying, there is no algorithm, that it's people sitting there, there throwing darts at it. I, I no, you could have, like, I mean, like Peter's no post, algorithm. Peter's rant about the suggested user list might have been uh, probably, w for, for an hour or so, was probably the hottest thing on Google+. Plus. Right, and then last night... Hot list. Yeah, um, last night I had the most interactive post on Google+, Plus, which never even made it to the bottom of the list because it was criticizing the What's Hot list. Right now I've just shared this circle from that post, which was a contest that said, hey, you know, What's Hot is kind of controversial. If you want to meet some people to interact with, then comment and share this post, and I'll include you in a circle share tomorrow. So right yeah. now I have that circle, and it's trending because it's got, you know, 24 plus ones, 15 shares, and 18 comments. The interesting thing is going to be is that going to be moderated away from the from the what's hot list because it's kind of critical of what's hot. So mm -hmm. it, 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 at least the recommended the user list is accurately named. At least the recommended user list is accurately named. Unlike the what's hot list because it's, it's not a really list, a list, not a circle. It's not the what's hot list. It's Google's recommendations among the things that are currently hot on Google uh, or were yesterday. Linda, what's up? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you, and you have the awful static as usual, but it's great to have you with us. I'm sorry, I have, this is a different headset. And you are in a, have you moved yet? I know you're getting ready to move from, no, uh, 
No, okay. we haven't moved yet. We probably won't move for a couple more weeks. I just went to the liquor store today to make sure I could round up some boxes. Sure, that's why. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I bumped well, into you there, and I was also looking for boxes. Um, mm. I'm kidding. Okay, so tell me, Linda, um, my beloved uh, uh, Linda, who's on the suggested user list, tell us um, – I. You've been listening to this. Um, mm -hmm. Give us your thoughts on this. You're on it. You've got it close to a million followers. Um, that and uh, three bucks will get you a cup of coffee at 7-Eleven in, in the real world. Um, is it fair? I mean, for people who are like, you know, I've, I'm not on it. I should be on it. You know, the, 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 that viewpoint or it's, it's unfair that the way they do it is not transparent how they choose. What are your thoughts? There are more disadvantages than there are advantages. There is a burden in being on it because what you are, like I said in the little chat box on Justin, is you are the Walmart greeter. You're, going, you're, you're setting an example for other people to see what to post, how to post it, how videos show up, how pictures show up. You're, you're an example that's going to show up in their stream. But one thing they've done with the suggested user list now that wasn't there initially, and it's a great thing, and it has slowed down the number of people that have circled me now coming through there, is they give a sampling of what, you know, you click name and see what their posts are and look through what, are, what is it they're posting about so that I'm, people are being choosier coming in because not everyone is jumping on my bandwagon anymore. So I saw that difference the minute they changed the design for it. Um, but it is. There are many, you know the disadvantage. You see it in my stream, what the disadvantage. Well, the things you don't see is the spam that's now grayed out. Um, and well, you, can understand the frustration, right? you can understand the frustration. Um, I'm sorry, uh, what? You can understand the frustration. Like Peter has worked um, since July to get the number of followers that you get in a slow week, right? How many do you get a week? How many circle you in a week? Whoa, some, I don't know because um, I get more than what I see in my drop-down notification. I just, you know, whatever shows up in the notifications, I'll scan through them, but I don't get all my notifications because I get so many. I really... Couldn't tell you how many. I don't get like there was a big surge when you know initially when it first opened to the public, you know, and before there was a suggested user list. Um, I had a big surge then. Everybody did, I think, when it opened up to the public, um, and people were recommending me, and I was recommending other circles, and that's people in circles, and that sort of thing, but. I, I really I couldn't tell you it is nothing like it was. They're, choose, they're being choosy except for the people that don't care, and they are not a valuable commodity to even someone who's monetized. It's the ones that care that are going to be the. Linda, your audio is, is straight up bad. Um, I think um, we may have lost her. I can understand what she's getting to say. Is is I think the perception she has is the people that they're choosing are people that are clearly not trying to monetize this. And what you'll notice, and again, this is me making assumptions, is all of a sudden now there's a lot of brands in the suggested users list, and they are at the top of the categories. So maybe there's a non-compete agreement when these brands pay money to be on the what's hot list, or maybe not. You know, maybe we, maybe that's not. Do the we case. know that someone's paying to be on the what's hot list? Because that's an allegation there, Peter. Okay, now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is incredible. Somebody just commented on last night's post that was not on the what's hot list, and all of a sudden last night's post is in the middle of the what's hot list. Yes. So I think I perhaps think somebody took my mute button off. I think you're paranoid. I saw your what's hot list <laughs> show up when you link to your new, uh, your your published circles. That's the last post that I saw on there. Then it, when it showed up in the what's hot list, I think you're you're overly paranoid, and I think my connection just died as well. No, you're still here with us. Oh, I'm still here. Okay. I, I think Linda should be careful about well, things that she says, though, because Dan made a couple of comments today which were very telling. He said, I'm not on that list, and I should be. He said it several times. I'm not on that list, and I should be. 
And Linda saying that she's got a zillion people and more coming in all the time, it's like sticking a knife in the shoulder and twisting it. No damn. Is that I never said accurate? that. What are you talking about? Well, you said yeah, I'm not on the list, but, about the but they're not. I, said, I don't have anywhere near. I can get a zillion people now. Oh, like I I've never said that. What are you talking about? You said I'm not on the list, and I should be several times. I never said I about. should be. Guys, did you say I it or not? No, no, I no. He was he it. was referencing kind of the zeitgeist where where people feel that they should, and that's an argument that's being heard a lot. I yeah, see. no, 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 no. I I could care less. I I don't care. I mean. Uh, okay. I, I never, I don't, I don't think I should be on the. I mean, I'm not. I've never ever said that. Um, I just said I wasn't on the list. In other words, I, I, what I was doing was I was defending the list, and I made a point that I wasn't on it, so people wouldn't think that I was only defending it because I was on the list. I'm not on the list. That's the only reason I mentioned that. I could care yes. less. Yes. Your daughter is so right. much more adorable than you are. Even okay, let's do, let's do, let's do. The, she is. Let's do quick deal with my daughter because I'm going to have to peel soon. So yeah. we're going to do a little experiment here. So what I'd like you to do is this. Dan, pick one of the people in the audience here, please. Okay. Um, pick any any person at random. Okay, I'll yeah. pick her, uh, Linda. Linda. Linda, could you do me a favor? Do you have a calendar handy? Do I have a calendar handy? Yeah. Yeah, my uh, I don't have my glasses on. Hold okay. on. Okay. Dan, pick somebody else then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, pick somebody else. Okay, uh, Harold. Don't his glasses. <laughs> Let's yes. get Harold in there. Or, or Peter. Yes, I have or a somebody. I don't know. Right in front of me. Okay. Uh, grab a calendar for 2014 or 2015 and pick a single date. What are the date of your choice? Just tell April us what the date is. April 28th. Which one? April 28th. Which year? Right here. 2014. 2014, April 28th. What day of the week is it? Monday. Is it Monday? Oh, my Harold? goodness. Oh, wow. my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Now let's, let's throw it to somebody else. How about Peter? Peter, why don't you pick a date? Um, let's go with, uh, January 29th, 2014. What day is that, Mom? Wednesday. Is that Wednesday, Peter? That's creepy. Is it pretty incredible or what? See, she's not only look better looking, she's also less smarter than me. Anyway, that, that's my How little... How does she, uh, does she memorize, like, a couple years, or is she... Yeah, can you memorize a couple of years of the calendar? Is she is she one of those sixty minutes kids? She is, unfortunately. In other areas, unfortunately so. But in this area, <laughs> it's pretty amazing when you watch it. Good for you, sweetheart. Yeah. But how did she do that? I see the halo is just switched. photographic memory. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's my little special experiment for today. I wanted to share with you guys because we just awesome. found out about it. It's like wow, I can't do this. How neat. Um, okay, all right, so what we got next? Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, got spam. Now it's more hidden. Alan, what's the deal with that? Yeah, they made a, a brief, cha a simple little change in the comment and how comments are displayed uh, underneath every post. Previously, if there was a comment that they detected as spam, they kind of graded out, only you could see it, and then you could unflag it as not spam. Now they're going one step further, and instead of uh, graying it out, they've essentially collapsed all of the spam comments under a link, and neither you nor anybody else will see them unless you specifically take an action to look at the spam and, uh, and weed through it. But the reports I'm getting, for the most part, are that the, um, the algorithm they're using is pretty good. Most people aren't even bothering to unflag spam unflag uh, comments that get posted that are uh, not what they're looking for. And in general, it seems to be a pretty good tool that makes uh, lives a lot easier on people who get an awful lot of comments. I don't know, Peter, how many, how many comments do you get, and have you seen this a lot, or, or Linda? I don't get a lot of spam on my comments. Okay, well, lucky you. I don't know. I mean, I never saw it as much of a problem myself. Uh, I think I've seen spam on exactly twice. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't get much spam either. So it does, it's not really a, any great feature for me either. You know, but I've heard a lot of people who do get a lot of spam say that it's been very beneficial to them. And we lost Linda, so we can't sure. get her perspective on it. Um, Dan seems to have disappeared for a moment, so uh, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, the uh, there have been a number of improvements in uh, with the Google Plus uh, button 
that you the, the plus one button that you can see on external websites and on mm -hmm. the badge that people can place on websites that will direct people to Google+. Plus. The first big one is one that people have been asking about a lot, and that's uh, personal badges. Previously on uh, websites, they were able to create a badge that says, you know, follow me on Google+, Plus, or you know, follow this page on Google+, Plus, and it'll let them immediately add that page. Uh, now they're making it so that people can place their own profile, place a, a, a badge to their own profile on their personal website or their personal blog or whatever they want, and this will let people immediately add them from one of the, uh, from your own page. I don't know, Peter, have you taken a look at the, uh, the badge yet? Uh, the personal badge, I, I saw the release. I haven't had time to play with it. I was uh, uploading an interview I did, and it, I've been meaning to. There's so many things I'm working on. Uh, do you have, do you have a, a badge to your page? Well, you know, I used the um, button on my website um, because I was kind of upset they didn't have the badge for personal accounts. So I was, you know, one of the things I had suggested is, hey, why do we only have the, you know, the, the widget for, you know, I have, the, I have the badge badge, but not the widget that shows how many people have me circled, you know, where you can just directly click to add me to the circles. All I have is a badge which takes you to my profile. But yeah, that frictionless adding, that's, that's what I'm excited to do. So I will have to take a look at that. I apologize I haven't had time. No, that's it. And, and speaking of frictionless, it's not quite frictionless, but I think the, they even made a change to the badge that's used for pages now so that by default, if somebody clicks on it, it immediately adds the, the page to the following circle as opposed to letting you have to, to pick a circle. I guess they were either realizing people were getting confused by it or just went and, uh, and decided that people were going to follow you anyway, so they might as well save a step. Um, and also they've changed the sharing, so it's now one click. You used to have to click on plus one, and then share. Now it's uh, automatically opening the share window without you clicking twice, which is also yeah. kind of a nicer, no, I, faster, easier deal. Yeah, I think they're trying to make it faster and easier, not right. quite the, the friction list that we're seeing over on uh, Facebook, which you know means you automatically get shared no matter what you do. Right. But I think these are, uh, are good, good steps to make things easier. I think people can intuitively understand them. So I, I think it's a good uh, a good next step. And you know, Peter, try it. It took me a whole thirty seconds to add no, my I personal badge. Will. I definitely will, and I'll have that up on the website uh, by the end of the night. And I encourage you guys to visit the website if you haven't yet. Yeah, is it? Which we, su we subscribe to your we subscribe to your channel also. <laughs> oh, Peter, which, what's the website URL? Uh, it's uh, ironically uh, petergmcdermott.com. Dot com. Okay. <laughs> That's that's a G, right? G. As in, <laughs> G as in Google Plus. You, you could say that, or my middle name. Yeah. So. Okay, it looks like Dan disappeared. Yeah, we're we're not quite sure where he went to. He's left us with a, a green screen, so we're going to press on without him, even though it's his show. Right? Yeah, I think uh, I think Dan's actually doing a field report right now. He's he's waiting for the uplink truck. Oh, here he is. Come. There he is. He's that or, or he went to get rid of some stink bugs. Well, Peter, you're asking a question on how many followers these people get who are on the list. Uh, if you, you'll notice that, that some of these people are getting 14,000 a day new followers that are on that list. Yeah, and, and you can see where that can be distracting, especially for content creators that are trying to build their brand. But at the same time, it does kind of level the playing field. Um, you know, uh, uh, the more and more I look back at this, it's just very interesting because there's things about it that are inherently bad, but there's a couple things that do make a little bit of sense. So if we have this like core group of a couple hundred people that are you know at the top of their scale, and some of them should be anyway. I mean, Britney Spears would organically have that many. You know, in the future, they're trying to pump it up now because the adaptation's been the adoption's been slow, but. You know, if they only keep it to those people, and those people have, you know, tenfold more followers than anybody else is ever going to be able to reach, and that was one of the arguments I made that I was upset about, is nobody's going to be able to catch up to these people organically. They're not, I mean, unless, I don't know, unless they become the president, yeah. they're yeah, not going to be able to catch up I've organically. Been on, a core, I've, been on for, I've been on for seven months, and, and I have 9,000 followers, and, 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 and people get 14,000 in a day. Yeah, but but it, it's quantity over quality. That's the thing. And, and Peter, what, what's your core group of people who really regularly interact? 
it's 50, right? Maybe um, 100. Well, regularly, it's hard to say because there's a lot of people that comment. I, I have a diverse range of content. I, I post a little bit about tech, a lot about how to grow your business and your brand, and how to be a better representative of your brand, usually when that's a personal brand. So some you do a lot of how-to stuff. Different content. You do a lot of instructional how-to stuff, and a lot of, you do a yeah, lot right. of interesting stuff for, for entry-level Google Plus people. Um, right. who are first getting on, you know, explanatory things, and I think that's been a lot of your success. But really, I mean, I have 12, 13,000, you've got 30-some thousand. Um, everyone in here is in, in somewhere in the, you know, most people here are in the thousands, but uh, really it's a core group if you look at it, at the people who regularly post and interact with you. And uh, if you look at Linda's page, you're going to see the same thing, um, that there's a core group of, of about 100 people that post regularly on you know, back and forth with Linda. and uh, But there's also close to a million other people who may occasionally comment plus one share um, or just follow her and, and never interact. Uh, so, I mean, if, you're, if you want to be on it, you're not on it, it sucks. I understand. Um, and a lot of people feel that way, and it's not transparent. And maybe they should have a committee um, that determines who's on the list. You know, I don't know. But I guess... Uh, we, we, I don't know. Um, it's still in beta, and <laughs> you keep saying this every show. I keep saying that every show. It's true mm -hmm. though, uh, and it's very much in beta. And I don't think, and and the fact that, and it still boils down to this question: when someone asks you, what exactly? I got to get back to the the, the cute uh, Oleg and his adorable daughter. What what's your name, honey? What's your name? What's Rita. Rita. Uh huh. I see the halo is rightfully on Rita. Um, it's a shame we can't put the horns on, on your dad while the halo's on your head because you're definitely the sweetest, sweeter of the two, uh, although we love Oleg to death. But um, seriously, uh, the hardest question I have to answer is what is Google Plus exactly? And, and I'm like, well, you got a minute. You know, my sister was getting ready to give the speech, and I had to give her a primer or whatever, and, and I was like, okay, you know, let me call you back when I have time to talk <laughs> to explain uh, and, and I think that's a problem, and I think that's the reason that they're pushing the what's hot, and that's the reason they're they're calling what's really hot to come up with their what's hot list, as opposed to what's really hot. It's the Google's selection of what's hot, and why they have the recommended user list. I think it's their effort and, to and combat that's the this. And that's the real problem is because Google Plus is not about people to follow. What do you mean? It's not about people to follow. Google's even told us it's not about people to right, follow. Right, right. It's not like Twitter where you just follow and you're being followed. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Google, what Google Plus is about, and this is from Google Bye itself, Google care. Plus is about the integration of every single Google product that's there into a social environment. But the that's social aspect of it, which is Google Plus, I mean, who you follow is who you read, as Linda said when she but, was on. But, but that's... We're, we're approaching that from a, a Facebook and Twitter perspective. Exactly. Exactly. We're saying, we're saying that social is defined as who we follow, and it's not. Social is defined as who we interact with. In the real yeah. world, making the real making your online experience closer to the real world is how they introduced Google Plus to us. In the real world, we interact with people and we do all sorts of things with them. And that's what Google Plus is trying to do in the scope of what Google does. They're trying to integrate everything that's Google, everything that we do with Google, integrate it into a social context. And a social context is more than who we follow. Okay. Um, and I know we're beating the subject to death tonight. Well, it's, 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 I mean, it's been a, a legitimate cause of concern and consternation among uh Users. I mean, Peter certainly someone who contributes to the. He posted the thing, and he it was as I said, he was pissed off when he wrote the post, and he was uh, lively in the in the comments on the post back and forth, and he has a legitimate viewpoint that a lot of folks agreed with. So it's not something that's. Uh, you, you can't tell it by listening to Peter today. So that means that Peter must have somebody doing his post for him. That's no, what it means. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Peter's a professional, and, and uh, you know, but all of us have done, all of us have a, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll put that in a post, so, you know, caution, rant alert, and then I'll rant about something. Is that I'll the Netflix that. deal we're talking about now? Are we switching but, back uh, to Netflix? Yeah, let's talk about, let's talk about. Well, here's oh, the, dear. We're, we're emotional beings, as professional as you want to be, some things are going to strike your emotions, and that's what the internet is here for, for us to blog. It's not that we're publishing Look, in, a, in a newspaper, that's, having it on the front page of NewYorkTimes.com.
gmail.com. It's this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm thinking, and this is this is out of line, and I'm gonna call it out right now. I may come back on my word because I'll tell you what, you have thoughts that change over a period of time, and that could sure. be two days, two weeks. Somebody Somebody's could walk secret. into a store wearing something, you make an assumption, and you find out what the real story is, and then you change your mind a bit. M.G. Siegler uh, is, is a very popular writer. Uh, a lot of people don't like him. A lot of people love him, and, but I read him, you know, and uh, he rants all the time about stuff. And, um, you know, and, Next. And, and as I learned two weeks ago, don't, don't think that j your simple short Google Plus post can't go viral. You don't have to put it in the newspaper. Absolutely, yeah. um, especially if it talks about Netflix. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, moving right along. Um, let's... Uh, Maybe your adorable daughter can join us next, next week in your stead. All right. So what? What uh, during my brief absence, um, my uh, two-minute intermission after an hour and a half, um, what? 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 What's next? Uh, problems with Hangouts and Chrome. They've been Alan? fixed. What? what yes. What's the next topic is that. Is that it? Yes, that's our next topic. Let's problems lose our remaining and viewer and talk about problems <laughs> about a real tech topic here. No, uh, they, we won't talk about it in terms of tech. We're just going to pass it on as, uh, as some technical solutions. A lot of people who have been joining Hangouts using Chrome uh, have had a lot of timeout problems, have had a lot of connection problems. Right. Uh, Google's, Google's come out and said, yeah, we know it's a problem. It's a specific problem. Interacting, the interaction between how Hangouts work and how Chrome works, they have a workaround currently in place for Chrome. Uh, if you do see timeout error messages, just try again. You've got a better luck joining the second time, and they're hoping to push out uh, better fixes within the next release, within the next couple of days, uh, for Chrome. Uh, sorry, for Hangouts, and the next release of Chrome should have some improvements on the front as well. I went through a phase where my my Chrome was crashing uh, five yeah, or six times a day, right? Yeah, and this I had. This is different than that. This is a problem that specifically happens when somebody in Chrome tries to join. Yeah, six times a day, right? Yeah. Oops. Okay. Uh, um, so this is this is something they're aware of, something they're working on. You're seeing some workarounds rolling out now, and fixes are coming down the pipe. So I think that's all we really need to say about it. Okay. Um, hang out hotkeys. Yeah, Dan, we know, we know you've wanted for a long time to be able to do something like press the one key and the, the first person will show up on the main screen and press the two. And they, They've heard that. They're still working on it. But in the meantime, I wanted to make sure people were aware of two significant hotkeys, which will really help things out. Um, if for your Windows users, Control-D will toggle, toggle your microphone being muted or not. Um, on the Mac, that will be Command-D. And on the Windows, Control E will toggle your video mute. It doesn't seem to work, Alan. I just tried it. I just saw. It works. It, it does work. It's either Control Control D or Control E. Anyway. I like you should switch to Mac. I should what? He said you should the switch Mac, to yeah, Mac, and that's not going to happen. We know that. It only works on the Mac, I guess. No, we had people on Windows you, uh, demonstrating it without a problem. It's not working. I mean, I just tried Control D, and I tried Control E, and they also said happen. they're rolling these out. No, these have these have been in place for a while, actually. Okay, right. click the Google logo in the upper left-hand corner. That was the problem before with the spacebar hotkey. You have to click the Google logo in the upper left-hand corner. Yeah, you probably need to make sure your window has focus. Now this is exactly what I'm Alan. talking about, Alan. You this is the kind away. of crazy thing yep. that would never you'd never see on Facebook. You've got to click the logo before the. It's works. not that you have to click the logo. It has nothing to do with that. I mean, I have an active window; it just doesn't work for whatever reason. Maybe it's just you, Oleg. Have you ever? It's, it's, it's just out of focus. That's it. Oleg seems to have disappeared. No, not now. Now it's working. We should be so lucky. No, Oleg's Oleg's just not a very technical person. I'm leaving. That's it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We love you, Oleg. Animosity allowed him here. Rita, we love your pops. Don't don't let them leave. Um, okay, all right. So um, we have exciting new hotkeys that work if you select the window and if you click the Google and if it works. Um, so that's awesome. That's a great innovation, <laughs> and it proves why people are spending three minutes a month. No, I'm just kidding. It's very um, useful for me. Whoa, 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 whoa! Slow down. A little update. It doesn't work. If you, only if you have window. If you have the window, let me see here. Yeah, it doesn't work if you have the window less than full screen. Try it. Oh, it works for in Mac. Mine is less than full screen. Well, it's Mac is fine for, for those of us who have, you know, real windowing systems. No, no, but Alan, ser <laughs> seriously, try try it with the window being less than full screen size. Seriously, I, I can't. It is. 
Hold on. What's what's this? All right. While you guys diagnose this uh, bizarre and uh, niche at best technical glitch, so like if you've got let a me problem, move on to another topic. Use the the submit feedback button. Um. Yes, yeah, so you can be in a in a spreadsheet of aggregated uh, comments that hopefully someone will read. Okay, new graphic overlays for Hangouts, as we've seen. I guess uh, Oleg is demonstrating one for us. A halo. Yeah. Yes, there there are four new graphic overlays. There is a. Cat Aren't mask. you uh, demonstrate them as you go, so Wait. we can see for Do full I effect. Have to? Be a team player. Elaine's demonstrating them fine. <laughs> Elaine, let me see Elaine. There we go. I got a kitty on now. Elaine Sharp, you're a kitty. Go ahead. Get kitty. And Halo. I got the angel, which is you know not me. No, it's only mine. That's me. That's right, the Peter? Oleg. Right? That was yeah. And uh, I think Alan didn't the engineer say that that was pattern after Oleg that one. There? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then what's the fourth one? There's oh, a, Sarik, a cat, Sarik. a dog, ahead, an again. angel, and a demon. Another use, useless uh, you know time for programmers to Google. And we notice you've been using it all night, Oleg. It, it, it's not really perfect. It doesn't really work all the time, you know. Well, it's know. the same as any of their other uh, graphic things that have come on. And you know, what once again, once again, I said it's silly, it's cute, um, but there, there are isn't real a practical, practical application. Yeah. There are real and practical applications for this. I guess it's like it, it's like a, an emoticon or something. No, it's not because it's an it's icebreaker. The whole, the whole, everything I've read and everything I've, I've, I've even talked about this myself in in Hangouts and maybe in a couple of common threads. Is it's an ice icebreaker. It's a way for people that are are nervous about coming in this for the first time to say, hey, um, I know this is your first Hangout. Why don't you click that button? And then all of a sudden they're having a little fun because it's probably the first time they've seen anything like that. We're all geeks sitting here. I mean, we know how this stuff works. It's, it's no new news to us. This stuff's been here since the late '90s. But to them, coming on here, seeing it for the first time, and then having some sort of comfort level because everybody's being a little bit goofy, yeah. it makes a conversation. Yeah, uh, well, probably. Yeah. Exactly. It's silly. It's fun. There's a lot of hangouts that are just, you know, all they're there for is just to be silly and fun. And as part of that, it's a fine, you know, it's fine as you know, but, much but, as anything else that's going on. But actually, if you, if you, I mean, can I do, let me see if I can do this. Can I do this? Does that work? <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> and that <laughs> works. Okay. Now so if I can do now? this with my camera, now? Alan, what's the point of having it in the Hangout? Because what's not everybody point? can do it with their camera. And it, it kind of gives people tools that they can play with as part of a Hangout. You kind of match my background. I think it does something wonderful for you, Oleg. Yeah, it does something yeah. exceptional. I agree. Do I, I don't think it's a ratings bonanza, so I'm going to move. Um, a slight hint at at uh, at the Google and the Plus roadmap. Did you add that, Alan? And there's I a did. thunderstorm here, so if I suddenly disappear, I hope I don't. But that's why. Speaking of disappearing, thanks for having me, Dan. I've got to run for a phone Peter, call. Peter, thanks so much. Have we'll a good see one. You later, Peter. Thank you well soon. Thanks for sharing your rants. <laughs> You're always welcome. All right. Okay, so Alan, what's the deal with? Uh, I, I didn't post this, but what this was is uh, Google, this was a, an article that was posted, I believe this one is either quoting Fortune or CNN or somebody like that, yeah, uh, had an interview with, the, with Google's vice president for advertising. And if there's anybody at Google that actually makes money, this is the person who's responsible for it. Um, basically, in it, she talks about uh, a lot of, a broad variety of things including some hints at where, uh, where Google Plus is going. And one of the things she said is, and I'm quoting here, with Google Plus, it's not just about building a social network. It's the idea of what is our experience when it revolves around people based on who you know, based on who you have in your circles, and how we as users think about the information that we, Google, give to you. So that kind of, again, suggests that they're thinking about this in, in the long term. They're thinking about how it integrates with all of their products. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's no question they're doing that. And they already said, alluded that. Anyway, let me do a quick update, and then I'm going to peel out, because Dan keeps kicking me out, so I'll just leave. Uh, basically, the way it works is this. You need to click. It has nothing to do with the big screen, small screen, or clicking inside the window. You need to click on that bar, not on the logo, but that horizontal bar where the logo is. If you click anywhere in there, then it works. Okay, so that's the deal. You need to click on that area up at the top, where same area as the logo, but not 
You don't have to click on the logo, either, even though you can. Just anywhere in that horizontal strip will make it so it works. If you click anywhere else, then it's not going to work. And oh, you're saying you? where it says Google Plus on the top left, and then it's the, the, just the white bar, and between that and your like microphone and on and your tab. Right, and right. Cool thing. Exactly. Anywhere there. in that bar you click, then it works fine. And then and I can click Control D. Control D for microphone and Control E for camera. Right, Alan? Yes. Oh, Alec, I have to again add that it's, it looks like it's very Windows specific because we have no such issues with Mac. I'm, I'm not saying because I use Mac, but I, 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 I actually clicked on your video. What browser are you using, Shriek? Chrome, I think the latest version. Yeah. And I've, I've tested this with both Chrome and Safari. Uh, you know, the, I, it wouldn't surprise me if there are some technical issues behind this, but I know this was something that they've been working on uh, to address accessibility issues. There are some other keyboard shortcuts for accessibility issues. With well. that, you guys have a great weekend. Thanks, Oleg, Thanks so that. much, and congratulations to your very intelligent and beautiful young daughter who can mm -hmm. tell us any day of the week for any year. No, it's not, it's not even that. I asked, her, I asked her to tell me what the last Friday in a certain month was, and she couldn't even tell me that. So it's pretty, pretty remarkable, actually. That's neat. She'll yep. be on 60 Minutes for long. <laughs> well, I gotta make make a living somehow. So that's interesting. You're both on. You're on America's Most Wanted, and she's on 60 Minutes. Exactly. So exactly. Intelligent kid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thanks, Oleg. Have a great Bye. one. Thank you. Bye, Oleg. We only have one more official topic right now, and this is the. Uh, do you have your ID card? Do you care? Facebook does apparently. What's the deal with that? I this, don't care. This has <laughs> got to be one of the. I got one. You got I one. Okay. To be, I jumped in like a lemming. It was fun. I know more it, so I decided to do one. Yeah, well, here's the. Here's the funny thing about the last time I saw Moritz give a give a stat on it about uh, about 100, 120,000 people or so got theirs. Um, what's really funny is if you want if you look at the evolution of this, Moritz got the idea from uh, somebody from an artist in Germany who created a Facebook ID card protesting about how Facebook was getting all of this information about us and was essentially treating us as you know being able to, to create unique identifiers for us and kind of speculating out loud, gee, what will happen if we need to get a Facebook ID for our, our work in the real world? Um, and he created a Facebook ID card. And Morris then did essentially the same thing for Google+. Plus. What I find particularly funny is, I don't know how many people remember, about seven months ago, uh, there were these Google Plus ID yeah. cards that were Carmeline all over the place. Thompson. I think it was Carmeline Thompson uh, designed it. And you know what's even more interesting is that Facebook went after that guy yes. and forced him that's, to take it down. That's the, the follow-up. That's so what I meant whereas by Whereas here Facebook. we are on Google Plus going, give me one, you know? It's Not even we are saying, give me one. If you look at, you know, if I remember correctly, I think I saw Vic was showing off his. Yeah. Uh, Natalie was showing off hers. You know, so what are you talking about, Al? I don't understand. You're saying, okay, I missed this, and I, I don't understand the reference, and I'm kind of half understanding what you're talking about. Um, so months ago, some guy created a Google Plus ID card. Yeah, was he just, selling, oh, was, was he it selling was just, them? It was just this graphic that people could put up in their, put on their profile pages or, or post a thread about. Um, and it was just, you know, something silly that showed your ID number and showed a nice graphic and it showed your profile image and it showed some of the other stats about you. And at the time that it was created, uh, a lot of people were using it to to kind of pick up on Eric Schmidt's comment about how uh, Google Plus wasn't a social service, it was an identity service. And that's what people picked up on, and they were showing these ID cards to to kind of bring, dramatize that situation. And then they so went Google after him and made him stop. Back in July. No, Google Plus didn't, you know, nobody at Google made them stop. Just it ran its course as a, a fun thing to do. And now... Uh, somebody in Germany did something very similar for Facebook. And within the past couple of days, Facebook, a, a lawyer from Facebook called him and said, you need to stop doing this because you're violating our trademark. And Which isn't shocking because, I mean, they don't even want people to legitimately um, put their logo on their business cards with their Facebook um, accounts. Right. No, it's not I mean, terribly shocking. But uh, there have been some people who have said, you know, uh, the guy may may have been able to get away with it if he really wanted to put up a fight. And, you know, he wasn't using the whole word Facebook, which was clearly a registered trademark. He was just using the letters FB. Um, 
So, you know, there's some question about could they legitimately have made him shut down? But he said, you know, he, he's not, you know, he's an artist. He's not trying to get in trouble. So he, he voluntarily shut down the, the site. Um, but one of the things they're doing is they had planned to be handing out sample Facebook ID cards in public, in real space, over the next couple of weekends. And he said they're planning on going ahead with that, and they plan on doing that in a, uh, I forget how See, that, it, a that kind of thing pisses way. me off, Alan. That pisses me off. They have a, I mean, um, I've seen stuff, and I post this sometimes on Facebook. They'll sell your data, right? Mm -hmm. But then you can't exercise your freedom of speech to simply tell people where to find you on Facebook. Uh, you can tell people where to find you on Facebook. You just can't violate your copy, their trademarks in doing so. It's very clearly spelled out in the terms of service, Dan. Didn't you read them? How do you? Obviously, a, a joke. Um, nor have I completed a James Mishner novel or, or read the Obama health care plan. Um, but, uh, okay, so was the issue the logo or the word Facebook or what? The is well, Facebook is a trademark. The word Facebook is a trademark. So is Sprint, but I can tell you, like, if I can say, here's my Sprint cell phone number on my business card, and they can't stop me because well, I'm just saying they that could that's legitimately the stop you, maybe. You know, that, 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 how does he have 900 million users when he's such a jerk? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. I mean, my God. I thought that character in the social network social was, was fiction, but, or, yeah. or, you know, fictionalized. But, yeah, um, that's the thing. All these people um, complaining about Google Plus or Google and privacy, and I'm like, if you all go home and use Facebook and talk, and, and talk to your girlfriend or your neighbor or your mom or your buddy from school, and, and the, God, I, this guy is such a jerk. Um, the boy came. Yeah, but anyway, you any um, – now that I've offended 900 million people, <laughs> I talked two weeks ago. Okay, anybody uh, – any final Google Plus thoughts? Let's start with our newest uh, participant here, Eileen. Any, uh, is it Elaine? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. Um, what do you want to know? <laughs> I don't know. Did you have a good week? I mean, any, any uh, I did. And you know, the thing is, Plus? yeah, What's I've that? been, I've been here since, uh, field and beta and I came on knowing absolutely nobody. And now I have 17,000 followers. Um, and I have a very diverse group. So, you know, I would have to say that maybe I'm the anomaly, but I really don't care about being on the suggested users list. And I don't care about being on the hot list. As a matter of fact, for the first time yesterday, I was on the hot list, and it was painful. It really was painful. It totally destroyed my uh, my ability to simply have a conversation on my profile because suddenly there were you know 100 people making comments, just like LOL. That was it. I mean, that was the extent of the conversation, and it was tedious. And you know, 200 people shared something, and I don't know. I, I'm not interested in this. It doesn't affect my interaction with the people who matter to me. That's the, the point I was making. Me. That's the point I was making. You have quality with your 17,000. You have quality. You have a, a slowly cultivated following that uh, likes exactly. what you do. Exactly. It's not that they saw you on a billboard, and mm -hmm. you have 700 million people or 700,000 yeah. people, um, and and they leave. You know asinine or irrelevant or spam Listen, comments. Yeah, you know. I'm not young. I'm not a hottie. I don't give a shit about what, you know, Ooh, tech. I mean, it's part, of, it's part of what, uh, you know, my, my background and I know a lot about tech, but it's not my thing. Social marketing isn't my thing. Um, I'm here doing random stuff. I would have to say that I'm probably uh, about as random as you can get in terms of I post what I'm interested in. That's I don't all. know. Alan's pretty random. Um, I'm just cool. kidding. <laughs> so we're going to I'm gonna have to check out Alan later. That's it. That's it. Alan, great guy. Okay. Sarik, did you have a good Google Plus week? Any uh, final thoughts? Uh, yeah. I just wanted to uh, ask you about the 900 million user comment you made. Um, well, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I kind of think that they, uh, Facebook is mostly like the early days or the later successful days of Microsoft when you do something wrong and then you pay for it and then that becomes the standard. But anyway, that's not the real thing of what I want to say. I actually sent you a link about this article in Forbes. I don't know how many of you read it. 
Um, about oh, that's right. Yeah, give us a quick uh, because you you chat. I, I I'm sorry, I forgot. I was gonna uh, add that to the list. Please, right. next time you have something like that, add it to the list because anybody yeah. can edit that list. But yeah, give us a quick uh, thing on that, and then we got to roll because we're we're coming up on two hours, and I'm gonna get all the you know. Damn, please shorten the show. You know, have some discipline. But uh, you were actually uh, chatting back and forth with the author of the article, and right. I think the gist of it. Um, I, it was it was talking about because I guess March first was the start of the new privacy uh, policy or right. the terms of service agreement, which was um, billed as instead of having you know scores of, of disparate policies scattered across the things, it's going to be one policy that affects all the Google properties, everything from YouTube to Google Plus to Picasa, et cetera. And the advantages in the article he suggested that one of the things was um, if you send a Gmail a, a message in Gmail to somebody talking about um, you're thinking about buying a British car, then later if you go to YouTube or Google and you search for Jag Jaguar or Jaguar, as they say in England, um, then uh, it would pull up the car, not, not the big cat. Um, but then he went on to say that, uh, but wait a minute, you know, this is uh, a, a game changer for the positive image that the brand has had in the past, and, and why was, what was his argument there? Uh, well, the article itself is written by a guy called David Winchamori, he's a contributor for Forbes, and uh, the article is titled, Did Google Break the Brand at Midnight? He's not even looking at Google+, Plus. he's saying that by doing this, by combining, uh, you know, what Alan was saying earlier today, about getting, making Google as one product with a lot of services under that, uh, his argument is it's going to break the brand. And I, I kind of didn't agree with that, so we had a little back and forth. And uh, you can see my comments on the article. And then <coughs> uh, uh, what, uh, a couple of things what he said didn't make sense to me. He said it's a breach of privacy. Well, hello, you've been using um, Facebook. We don't understand privacy at all. And then um, uh, he also says that Google is kind of putting a, a what do you call, uh, making itself a target. Uh, like like Microsoft some, some time back, you know, and I trust and all these things. A couple of things he actually mentioned in the article itself was wrong. Uh, he was saying that uh, if it's a shared computer, then whatever you search in Google could end up on somebody else's search results, which is BS according to me, because if you actually signed in and uh, search something, yes, it will show up as your search history. And of course, Google always gives you an option to delete whatever history you have and all these things. But, you know, it was just that. And it was a very interesting article. Uh, I don't know whether it's a good article. I think, okay. it, it, Go ahead, not Alan. too surprisingly, it was uh, quite a lot of stories and articles and such came out yesterday about the new privacy policy. I was in a Hangout with the Hangout team, and in the middle of it, a uh, reporter jumped into the Hangout trying to get people to comment on a quote for it. And every single person in the Hangout talked about how the media had totally bollocks the story. And I, uh, I think that the, the two prescient things to me are the, the funny comment, um, obviously flippant and sarcastic, but very telling, that I think Alan said, did you read the terms of service agreement? Like, nobody reads them. Here's nobody a good reads one. them. You can't. Actually, there's and an the interesting other, quote that I heard. There's an interesting quote that I heard about this. There was a statistic quoted, somebody said that only one out of ten users had read the new terms of service. And I think... I'm surprised probably, it's that high. I'm surprised it's yeah. that high. Probably it's all of the news media and all of the, the EFF people. Um, and that accounts well, for one EFF out of ten people. people. Um, I don't even think what, the news media The EFF is. people. What they didn't say was how many people, percentage-wise, had read the old terms of service. And I suspect <laughs> it was even worse. Yeah, no, but I mean, who, who has time, you know? Like I said, it's all about the return on investment. Before you do anything, is this worth my time? And I don't mean return on investment. That's the best term, but I'm, I'm not talking about financially. Um, but I'm talking about, you know, before I open a Facebook tab and look at the, this completely um, – the only thing that reminds me like, – the new thing is just so ridiculously – so so many different th – Three things going on, you know, diff basically three streams, um, and I, you know I've got Google Plus down pretty well, uh, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's like what's how mu how much time am I going to spend on this? But I think that to me, 
I think it makes sense because it's one simpler terms of service agreement and that each separate entity can lobby to have their new term entered into it and then there's a one group of people who decide you know this makes sense and, and we'll do it to try to make it simpler in the same way that um, uh, the, the, the current administration is, is doing this with, with the, the credit card forms. I remember the, whether or not you agree with the current administration or not, um, I remember that interview with um, the, the, uh, the woman who helped start the uh, consumer thing, and she said, she, it was just great interview, she said, I'm a Harvard professor, and I don't understand my credit card agreement. Um, and, uh, and it's true. I mean, you read all these crazy legalese terms. So they're trying to simplify it, and that example of I sent a, an email to – if I send an email to Alan and I say, you know, I'm interested in, um, you know, should I get a Mercedes or a, a, a Jaguar or a Jaguar car, and then later I'm Googling or YouTubing for videos that it would know that I'm not talking about the cat. I'm talking about the car. That would actually be helpful to me. Um, but then he pointed out what if you're on a shared computer and what if you're looking up um, cancer treatment? And you haven't told your your uh, your 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 wife yet. It shouldn't uh, matter because you're you're not sure. That that's you know what I mean. How, how will it show up on your wife's search results? If you're I, on a shared computer and you're and it's still logged in as him. Well, but here's the, here's the thing also. That's though, the thing. I mean, if that was the point that the article was making. That that was the which one is graphic not true. example. Uh, my belief is not true unless it is shared locally. Unless there's unless there's some cookie which kind of stores your search results locally. Well, if you're on one computer and you and your wife both use the computer, of course it will be shared locally. And, and of course that, thing, that's yeah. a very accurate example, Sri. Well, did here's you the thing, yeah, if you're on the same computer, if you're on the same computer, even if you're not logged in. Then the local computer has got a, the cache of where you've been before, so you know this has nothing to do with Google's terms of service. You can have this the exact same problem with Internet Explorer. You can have the exact same problem with Firefox. No, there is one thing. It's irrelevant to Google. If you use the same aspect. Chrome browser, but it got great hits on, uh, on 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 search results, Alan. But this ahead, has sorry. always been sorry. the case with Google. Google has always provided a feedback. You know, I mean, HTML5 has been built on the back of what Google has been doing all this time, which is to give information. You've always had a, a, a header in your Google, in your Gmail account that relates to your email. This has always been the case. There's never been anything other. So what I think what they've done in, in consolidating all the terms, they have simplified it, but it's the thing that has always been present. And you know, there's a certain kind of transparency that's required legally now, which wasn't necessarily written out specifically before, but it was always there. This is a data mining, research-based interface. This is exactly. And, you know, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I was very surprised to learn that they weren't already sharing data between yeah. the components. Yeah, which is a great thing. You know, they, they, I can't imagine that you know, they are not going behind our back and sharing it. Right. I mean, you know, the for, reason a I for a lot of people, you know, it, it kind of makes sense to me if you're saying uh, Google Mail and, and YouTube. You may not be aware that YouTube is actually Google, but for sharing between Google Docs and Google Analytics and Google AdSense and Gmail and all of the stuff that's very clearly branded as Google, it was really surprising to me to learn that those were stovepiped in the past. And well, what's it's also interesting, to, me, yeah, what's also we, interesting to me is that Google is mining data. Google is not analyzing our data. Okay, so gathering data and analyzing data are two very, very it is different using, It is using that data to, ch I mean, uh, adjust your preferences. So whether it's analyzing or not, I'm not really sure that's the right word. They have no, to no, hire okay, analysts to no, analyze data. That's the they difference. sell the data to analysts. Okay, it, here's the difference, I think, uh, for folks, because this, this is a term that may not make sense to everyone watching. What you're saying is the difference between... If, um, if, if, if I put a cookie on the computer that you were looking up to use the Jaguar ver the cat versus mm -hmm. car example, um, that uh, there's a big difference between someone sends, you know, someone does a, a YouTube search for Jaguar and watches a car video and then goes and does a Google or uh, a Google search for Jaguar and, and they get results that are more related to the car versus the thing, but that could all be locally stored. In other words, it could be like not associating Dan McDermott with that search. It could be just associating the person on this computer. 
that's very different from selling your name to the Jaguar company. Okay. That's putting yourself in some centrally yeah, hosted that's thing. That's right. And so I it's just all based, Google it's all done on the local end, too. And, That's and right, to and I will trust, that, and to I will trust that, Google with it. It's clear that what Google has said is they're not selling our data. They That's will right. use our data. They say it very clearly. They say very, they're not selling our data. They will use our data to, to essentially pick advertising for us. Exactly. They will use our data yeah. to... to isn't the bigger yeah, question and the, and the problem education in general as far as the internet and using computers, shouldn't people simply be told that anything they do on their computer, whether it be on the internet or locally, is not private? It never I don't been. care what you do on your computer, it is not private. I don't care if it's related to Google, I don't care if it's related to Facebook, I don't care if it's local on your computer. The moment you, you connect your computer later to the Internet, people can get that information. So but Craig, aren't we holding uh, Internet companies to a different standard? Because it's not really, it's not everything you do on your computer isn't really private, it's everything you do isn't really private. Remember you used right. to go into Radio Shack back when they used to handwrite your receipt and There's then all no of a sudden, no, privacy. Right, right. Then six weeks later, you'd start getting their mailings, and That's then right. all of a sudden, you'd get mailings from other companies. I mean, I'm picking on Radio Shack as an example. I don't know if they actually sold data. I assume they did, but you'd get on these lists based on things. You'd return a, um, you'd buy a, a refrigerator, and you'd fill out the registration card, and you'd mail it in 30 years ago, and then all of a sudden, you might get a. Um, uh, uh, you know, an ad about an ice tray. I, I do not assume that anything I say on my cellular phone is private. It isn't. It I isn't. don't assume that anything I do in public is private. I really don't even assume that anything I do in my home is private anymore. So, I mean, for I think for people to, to assume that they're going to be able to do nefarious things or hide things from their partner or whatever, uh, on the internet, on, on their computer, and so forth. I, I think that's not a very safe assumption. So I guess one good thing about all this controversy is it, it kind of makes you stop and think before you do something bad. You're I less naughty. Are, are, are we all less naughty than we used to be, Sweet? <laughs> you, uh, do you have you earned that halo on your head now? I am never naughty because you're afraid of being exposed for any naughty thoughts you might even have. That's next, right? They're going to read your mind. That's why I used to separate. Or we stop caring if they know that we're naughty. Yeah. Let, 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 let me let me just add this. You know, Dan talked about having one service agreement. That was just a precursor for what Google was planning to do, right? I mean, I actually like, I mean, I agree to what uh, Craig said. It is right. You can't assume. You can't assume anymore. Everything is out there. In the hands of the right people, they can get. doesn't have to be Google. The moment you're online, if you're, not, if you're careless, they can get all the information from your computer. But my point is, by joining the service agreements, all that Google is doing is, Whatever information you search for, whatever mails you type to your friend, etc. Why do you want to see ads in YouTube, which does not relate to anything you have searched before, and uh, only relate to what you have searched in YouTube? I actually like the fact that Google understands what I want better. If I am a really big Google user, it. it uh, for, I'll give you a simple example. I was looking for a home. I was trying to buy or whatever, and then I saw this ad on YouTube which led to me a YouTube video which is a home nearby. I was amazed. You know, I think the question is if you're using these various internet services, you either like the company and you think that they're not up to no good and that you can have a good relationship with them, or you don't. And no and no such illusions. No such illusions. Well, well you well, know, whoa, 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 whoa. I would Here's rather the thing, have my data in Google's hands than in Mark Zuckerberg's hands. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with Google. I have no problem with Google. Yeah. That's another thing. You're right, Craig. Um, if you look, at, you look at the pattern of behavior, right? Zuckerberg is not somebody I would trust with um, a sandwich. No. And, uh, but Google, you know, look at how they treat their people and everything. Um, you know, the, yeah, they're, out, they're all out to make a buck, right? They're all out to earn a profit for their shareholders. 100%. Then, then you, you wait, wait like to The way Facebook. they treat their people, I mean, like the whole thing, you know, do no evil, whatever. I, I think that they're kind of guided by that to a degree. They're trying to make a buck. They're trying to earn a profit. They're trying to, you know, reward their shareholders. But, and they're trying to be competitive. 
but I don't see them deliberately, secretly, nefariously trying to screw somebody uh, and, and, and lie and cheat, you know, to... Uh, and if that changes, then we can move away from them. If Correct, right. but I just no I, longer I don't, have that They have not in the past exhibited a pattern of behavior that would make me believe all these horror, scary stories that people are putting out to try to sell newspapers or, or get hits on their websites. But I see, that's the see failure it. of comprehension for me, is that people complain vociferously about being um, held captive by these social networks. Leave. That's right. <laughs> you know? If you don't like it, don't let the door... <laughs> yeah, I think you were the good Lord. Go, 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 go. Go back to watching the sitcoms. That, that actually makes me ask a question. Is it possible right now, after the privacy policy change on March 1st, to, to unsubscribe from any one of Google services alone? Never sign into Google ever again. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. What if you just want to I don't think you're going to end up doing that, though, Sarik. I don't think you're going to be subscribing to a service. No, I won't be. But I'm saying, is, is it going to be possible at all? I don't think so. That's one thing. Wait, you mentioned Facebook. Wait till there is a two-way complete integration between Bing and Facebook. And everything you post public on Facebook, as well as what you search in Bing, is going to be inter, inter, you know, interconnected so much that whatever you say, search on Bing is going to be an ad on Facebook. Trust me. I'm not even worried about Facebook, to tell you the truth. I don't use it that much just because I don't like it that much. But, That's but right. I'm not worried that they're going to come and attack me or do anything to me. I mean, if they put an ad up that because based on some search I did or whatever, big deal. I don't pay attention to those ads anyway. So, right. yeah. But the thing that I don't like about what they do is um, if, if you, you'll click on uh, the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes page and you'll click, boy, you'll click the like button. Or you'll be, let's say that, okay, let me give you an example. And I've, I've shown this to people. Let's say you're on um, the Betty Crocker page and you're like, man, I love, my wife loves this brownie mix and you were just reading the ingredients or whatever and you click the like button, the Facebook like button that's on BettyCrocker.com, right? Do you know that without your knowledge, that your friends may see an ad with your picture on it on their page. That's uh, when they look at Betty Crocker or whatever. Yeah, they yeah, say that that uh, Craig Shiv likes this. It's, it's worse Facebook. than that. You yeah. don't even need to click like, and your friends will get an ad saying that you've been yeah. on the page and read it. Well, well, it's, again, again, that's frictionless, and you're not that's aware of it sharing. because they don't show up for you. I found, I discovered this when. Um, I asked I had a buddy of mine, Alan, who was using my computer and was logged into Facebook, right? And uh, I went to Facebook and I didn't realize at first that he was still logged in. It was a neighbor. He came over to use my computer for whatever reason. And um, before I had a chance to, as soon as, you know, before I realized that and logged out and logged back in as myself, I saw my picture on something. And it said, Dan McDermott likes this. And I forget what it was. And I don't remember if I'd clicked. Uh, I don't know if I've ever clicked that I like a page for, for these reasons. I don't want to be using an app. Or, or I'm just like, why, why am I doing this? Um, and I don't trust Facebook. But uh, I was like, my God, they're, they're actually using my image in an, in an ad without my knowledge or consent. I'm sure it's buried in terms of service agreement, right? But yep. so, they're so actually marketing I, 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 a product I, I, with my personal recommendation because I clicked the damn button somewhere so and I don't this, even know about so, it. So this gets back to education and, and we need to make, do a better job of informing people of all these things that are going on so that when they see these things, they can take it with a grain of salt. Just like every time a hurricane hits Florida and they say that the entire state has been completely destroyed, uh, you know, video clips at 11, they need to know that that does not happen. There are buildings here that are 100 years old, you know, two miles from me. And if people they've been here for 100 fiction. years, the whole state has not been destroyed. People so would rather believe fiction than reality. We you have to believe, we have to educate people that this is all a bunch of, uh, you know, BS out there and that you're going to see all kinds of things on Facebook. You're going to get all kinds of spam in your email. When you get something from the prince that says he's got a million dollars for you, that it's bogus. Now, they, most of them know about that one. But they don't know about all these others. So it's an education problem. And until people get better educated about this sort of thing, we're going to have a problem. 
The other yeah, well, problem is that technology is surpassing our own ability to keep track of what it's going to do next, you know? I that's just what leads to awful uh, quagmires like SOPA. That's the problem. There are legitimate issues, and they end up coming up with some horrible thing like SOPA. Uh, no, it's, it's to, more than that. It's the ba baby out with the bathwater. I just got a spam phone call the other day, um, and I'm pretty savvy about this stuff because I've taught my students about it for quite some time. Um, and it was based on series auto response. So it asked me a series of, you know who this is? I'll try to guess. And it was very, very human. It was a very human spam call, but it was a robotic call. That's was, interesting. I wish you recorded it, was, it. Well, I wish, had I known, next time I get that call, I'm going to try to record it because it was... Here's a question. I wonder if it would have been legal to record if the call had come from a, a two-party consent state. I don't know. Even I'm though it's Canada. not a human. Even though it's I'm not a human. Canada. Yeah, that's a, that would be a good question. That is a good question. Um, and yeah. you know, it started out with, hi, I haven't called you for so long. Guess who this is? And it was just like, who are you? They are um, just, uh, okay, you know, all right. Well, just guess. It was really freaky, actually. It was very welcome, freaky. Welcome to the singularity. <laughs> okay, Craig Ship, any final thoughts? I got to tie, man, I'm going to get, oh, this is like a two-hour show. Okay, Craig, any final thoughts on Google Plus Week? Yeah, it, yeah, it's all the wild, wild west out here. Google is great, and just uh, have a good time while it, while it still is the wild, wild west. Now, how's your weather down there? You're in Sarasota, right? Yeah, it's about 80 degrees today. Oh, man, you have my sympathies. <laughs> I'm in the thunderstorm, and it's cold. We, we've got room <laughs> for you. Come on down. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Anthony, I see is is um, incognito or something going on. Alan, any final Google Plus Week thoughts? My final Google Plus Week thought. I want to emphasize the fact Google Plus is is really about the people and the things that we talk about. And I want to illustrate that with uh, by mentioning a person. And I don't do this very often. Gentleman's name is Alan Shapiro. He spells his first name funny. A L A N. Alan Shapiro uh, yesterday rallied a whole bunch of people to try and cheer somebody else up. And he suggested they post pictures uh, representing joy, talking about what's joyful in their life, and uh, sharing pictures, sharing stories to do so. Uh, it's efforts like this that I think really, really typify what's great about Google Plus to me. It's, uh, it's not what we talk about specifically. It's not any given topic. But it's that we do talk about stuff. We do share it. And we do try to find what's joyful in our lives. Excellent note. And as I said, that reiterates uh, my previous point that Google Plus is about quality versus quantity. Uh, but we're working on the second part. So thanks so much for all the participants. I really appreciate it. Uh, that concludes this edition of Google Plus Week. I will see you next Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. GMT. Till then, have a great Google Plus Week. Okay, that's the official recorded versions over, and the hangout continues, and the stream yes. continues. So you can get the you can get the die off now. I'm just how kidding. how do we <laughs> how do we get on air? Is, is everybody going to get it eventually? Everybody is going to get, they they've said that they're going to give it to everybody eventually, um, but that it's not quite there yet. They still need to to scale up the infrastructure, um, but their goal is to eventually get it out to everybody. This is for Sarik. I got to. And so Dan, God. Dan, Here's I got to. Dan, I've got to give you a warning. Next week, you can use that sign-off, but you're going to have to change it for the week after. Why? Because oh, it's the time change again? Yeah, it's when the time change is <laughs> again. Oh, man, that's a problem. Yeah, because it switches GMT. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't really. And I don't, I don't know when, when Europe goes on summertime. It's hard enough to get people to show up for anything on a Friday night. I mean, of all horrible nights to do a show because um, everyone obviously is, you know, wants to go out and get their drink on or whatever. And then um, to also have a, a changing time makes it even more challenging. Hey, Brad, hey, good to see you again. Do you, do you send out a 24-hour notice before the show? I to don't, but it's always the same thing. And I, I usually post it earlier in the day. Um, I mean, I post like during the day. I'll, uh, a few hours before, I'll do it. Because you might want to just fire out to whatever circles are you usually have included in your show, just a little thing 24 hours before, because I know if I get a little poke in the ribs like that, I'm always usually a little, a little more. Sometimes I'll do it if we have the topics up, and I'll post the previous week's episode. But last week I, I had a glitch um, 
with uh, Wirecast processing uh, analog audio from an Intensity Pro Blackmagic card, which is obviously a bit inside for folks who don't deal with that kind of stuff. But So it was real scratchy audio on my end. The Hangout was fine, but mine was real bad. And it wasn't like that in the Hangout or on the Justin, but on the actual recorded stream, it was really bad. Wow. Uh, so I didn't I post actually, that. You know what? Can I ask you about something? I'm going to put this on screen share because I ended up getting this tonight, and I've never seen this before, which is I got the plug-in for this... Um, here we go. See if I can pick it. Um, let's let's start with what browser, what browser, and what operating system are you operating using? Uh, Mac OS X. Now hold on. Let me sh see if I can show you this. Um, there. I'll be back, guys. Y'all proceed and do what you're gonna do. I gotta. Try to get this thing going to process it for YouTube. That's I actually have to one. take off myself. Uh, I'm glad is I that, I'm glad I caught the tail end of the show, Dan. Thanks. Before Fred. you go, Dan, is yeah. that you see this record that I've just put up on the screen here? Do you see that? Is that a pop up? That's the plugin for this for this hangout. And no, no. What I'm saying is, how, how did you arrive at that page? Did you? I get have it no it idea. Up? It popped up. I'm I, trying to remember. I've seen it. And I think I, you, you probably use some hot key. No. Yeah, Alan no. can tell you I have no idea. Yeah, anyway, I, th I was just curious what it is. So I've, I've seen it. It's basically um, some internal, it's basically some internal tracking stuff. Hmm. Why I got it, I'll never know. Yeah. It literally popped up when I came into your hangout. I've seen it. I've actually even tried to get it once before, and I'm trying to remember how I got there. Um, click on the help. What does this all mean, the first line? <laughs> Google Meet. What's that? Google. Did that pop up another window? No. I mean, it, it's obvious there's some stuff in here that makes sense. You know, call participants. You know, it says there are uh, it's really seven of us. Down. It says there are seven of us, which, since this is an on air, that's correct. Yeah. Um, but it's really slowing down my computer, too. Very interesting. Oh, some of that's very interesting stuff. Yeah. I wish I knew how to... I wish I remembered how to get this. <laughs> I wish I could tell you how I did. Because, I mean, you, you can't see where I'm pointing, but, you know, uh, the connections, it's telling you what what uh, what server and ports you're connecting to. Yeah. Um, the lines underneath it look like they're probably the uh, the ID for each user that's in it at the moment, and that's an internal ID. I, those IDs I recognize because they use the same IDs for the uh, the API Hangout developers have access to it. Um, resolution, that's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some interesting stuff there. Mm. Yeah, and when I click help, it's not giving me anything. It's not giving you the help. That's interesting. No. And I have plugins disabled, so or I have uh, rather pop-ups disabled, so I don't know why it even showed up. Are you using a Google Talk along with this, or mm, is it, is, no. are you signed into Google Talk? No. Yes, no. you are. I'm not actually. Well, you are. Well, I am to be on air. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you are in the sense that the thing on the left side of of our window is Google Talk. Yeah, exactly. And that is a Google Talk session. Yeah. Hmm. Funny thing, I Googled this and I couldn't find anything. <laughs> I've seen this, and I, I wish I... You know, I was probably debugging something at the time for them. It says Google I, Meeting Plugin Stats. That's the header, right? Yeah. Hmm. No idea how I got it. But it's very informative. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because this is if you're having if you're reporting a problem, this is what gets sent to them. Right. And I I don't think they understand that we can see this. They, well, like I said, I've I, they they've told me to look for it before. Really? Um, now I'm really curious if I can go there. And now that just says report. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Am I still here? I'm still here. It'd be yeah. interesting to see what happens when I exit, to see if it stays. Where is it? We don't, oh, what's that? 
That's not it. There should be a way to find out what it is all about. Is, is Dan still on the call? Dan is still here, but he's processing the video at the moment. Okay. I had a question uh, while we're looking into this. Dan mentioned about the search Jaguar. I just wanted to know, what would somebody really want to see when he type in a dual-use word like Jaguar? It depends, of course. Right, so... That's, I mean, that's the problem with Google+. Plus. Or, sorry, that's, that is where Google's been making their money. And that's where, you know, improvements that, you know, for example, Wolfram Alpha have been working on. Right. It's I mean, mo to more to to intelligent. Context. Exactly. Uh, uh, so what I'm saying is, all that Google can think about is, if you have searched for cars, okay, they correlate that from the industry I come in. Everything is correlation. The problem is it's, it's more complex than correlation. Agree. Context is more important. This is the emotional web. It's telling us what we want. So, somehow I just think, you know, uh, even Wall Street Journal or Forbes or any one of these websites, they have these contributors, they write articles just to be popular. That's Alan typing. Yes. And I'm using Chrome, by the way. You were asking which browser. Yeah, no, because that's, sorry. I thought you were about to tell me that you were having a problem connecting or something like that, which they've been having problems with, but mm -hmm. it wouldn't have affected you. Uh, I think I found it. Uh, try Shift P. Well, that was Shift, happening, so. Shift Where? P. Does it work? I got a new window. I got it. That's it. Yep. I'm a little geek. <laughs> Good find. How'd you find it? Uh, instead of searching for... What was that originally? Um, uh, instead of searching for Google Meeting stats or anything, I went and started searching for Hangout stats. So somebody had found it and posted it already. Cool. Simulate a talk plugin message. Hmm. I wonder if that's when I was saying hello to Peter. And I would have typed shift uh, capital P. And maybe it's, maybe? Check it. Because it was right at the beginning, yeah. That could be, and you probably hadn't clicked inside the, the talk box. Yeah, that's right. Ch check that link, it gives you more information. Cool. My computer's completely slowing down. Not because of this, I'm pretty sure. Well, no, it's, it's you know what it is? It's predictive. Um, it's Chrome's predictive right, algorithm. Right. system. So it just keeps collecting stuff in the cache, and I have to dump it. So there, and that's actually what's causing it for a lot of people, but I don't think they realize it. Alan, so do you... I'm sorry. Uh, Alan, do you use a Mac? Yes. Do you use Chrome with it? Usually, yes. Do you have any memory leak problems with Chrome? I have a lot of problems with Chrome. Okay, I, I have like 8 gig memory and then after some time I see that the uh, Flash plugin alone takes like a gig. The Flash plugin is garbage, but that's yeah. Flash. Yeah. On, on this Mac, no, on this Mac I leave the Flash plugin running, but I frequently kill it manually. Right, but if you kill it, then, uh, you know, if you are on... Is YouTube still using Flash? I think so. Uh, are they moved to HTML5? I doubt it. Usually, but I think it can can use other stuff now. All I know um, is that my but machine... But it'll, re it'll restart it if it needs it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No way. My machine gets really heated up. The fan is going like crazy whenever I try to do anything with any video. And that's, that is specific to Chrome. If I use um, 
Firefox, it's fine. Yeah, well, Chrome, I, I don't think Chrome alone actually uh, has a lot of memory issues, but when you start using plugins, um, uh, some of these extensions as well, I don't know why that is, because yeah. ideally the extension behavior should not be like that. Yeah, I know. The only extension, the only one that I had was Hangout Canopy, mm. and I ended up taking it off. Yeah, I removed a few of them as well. I just use it on demand right now. Enable it whenever I want something. Yeah. And I also noticed, have you guys actually used, there was a, there was a Google Plus uh, extension which allowed you to fold comments and posts. It was very, very useful. I forgot the name of that plugin. I mean, if you have a stream which is like a thousand posts in there and you're streaming down, you could actually fold each one of those posts, including the comments, into a banner. You know, finally to look like a Gmail page. Um, uh, after Google, I think, redesigned the page again, the Google Plus page again, it stopped working. It was a very useful plugin. I mean, okay, well, listen, I think I'm about to be kicked. Okay. I just, I just got to notice that I'm, uh, I have to power down. <laughs> I've never had this message before, but that's, like I said, Chrome, right? Good so, luck. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Take Bye. care. Bye. Alan, I'm going to drop off as well. Uh, if you guys are here later, we'll see you. Okay, have a good night. You too. Say bye to da Dan on my behalf. I think he's still busy. Doing yeah, he still looks busy. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Take bye. care, sweetie. You too. Ooh. Ooh. Dan, can you hear us at all? Dan, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm going to sign off as well. Hope you have a good weekend.